All right. According to this, we're live anyway. I don't know if that's actually true or if it's a myth. Uh, I got the link pinned up on my channel. I've got a link up on Jacob's channel. We're going to talk for um, 20 minutes. Oops, there we go. All right. We're going to talk for like 20 minutes, and then uh, and then we're going to invite people in to come and, and play um, and talk about uh, consideration and when it can be inconsiderate. Right. So this has come up a lot lately where, you know, well, have you considered this and have you considered that? And you know, there's an infinite number of things you can consider. <laughs> but this goes back to should you? Are they important? Are they interesting to the topic at hand? Because you, you can just consideration is infinite, technically speaking. Like, at what point do you not bring something in for consideration? Right. Um, which, you know, not to say never, but a lot of times it's a trick that we play on ourselves and it's a, it's a problem we just witnessed on the discord server right where people are they, they want to say something but they don't want conflict so they couch it in this well have you considered right and then they're projecting all over the place like well no i didn't consider that because it wasn't part of what i was talking about <laughs> right and sometimes you you need to say that to people like Look, have you considered that if you have a beer, right, that maybe, you know, that's one beer too many already? Right. Well, for some people, that's a concern. It's not a concern for a bunch of people, but for some people, that's a concern, right? Or have you considered that maybe if you start taking these painkillers that you won't be able to stop? That's a concern. Right? And, and if somebody asks you, should I take painkillers, it's perfectly reasonable to bring that up. But... If you say something like, well, I'm worried about oh, the impact this will have on the global economy. And it's like, well, yeah, but really I just wanted to go to the store. Uh, that's not a valid consideration, but the impact you have on the global economy in the, in the frame of I want to go to the store is you know, kind of pushing it. And then the question is, well, why are you doing that? Are you trying to guilt them into not going to the store? Probably. Probably you are, right? And do you know that or are you just doing that and not even realizing what your own unconscious motivations are? And I have a video on unconscious versus conscious motivations um, on navigating patterns because, of course, I have a video. And I think that's the, um, uh, that's the problem is, 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 uh, is that it's easy to get carried away with consideration and use it as a way to project something that you're otherwise avoiding talking about or to use it as a tool of manipulation to force people to do or not do a certain thing and it's very pernicious because it's one of these deceptions that we use on ourselves and it's our unconscious mind deceiving us into believing that we're being helpful or good or you know we're just you know we're just we're just trying to uh, make sure that that your poor tiny brain, which only had two options, now has to deal with a bunch of more considerations that aren't relevant or may not be relevant or are relevant but are unimportant. Because a lot of times there are decisions that the fact that they have consequences isn't relevant because you have to do them anyway. Like a decision is going to be made. There are going to be consequences one way or the other. Considering all of those consequences doesn't help you make the decision, right? Um, it can paralyze you into no decision. And, and that's really important to realize. So sometimes you're using it as warfare. It's a weapon. And anything can be weaponized. Like empathy can be weaponized. Compassion can be weaponized. Love can be weaponized. Consideration can be weaponized. All of these things can be weaponized. And that's because... The weaponization of something is in the framing and the intent and not in the thing itself. And thinking it's in the thing itself is a materialist mistake, right? And and that's a that's a problem. Yeah, and, and to be fair to people, right? Like we, we can weaponize these things to ourselves, right? So in in some sense, this this idea of analysis paralysis, which is I think a, a really modern problem where a lot of people have to deal with. Like it's it's us 
over and over talking to ourselves have you considered this have you considered this right like and it's not it's not in that that way but it's like oh i should think about this oh you should think about this right so there's this this adding of complexity to uh, that that goes beyond relevance right so so in in a sense um consideration uh is is in in some sense extending what is relevant right like what what is the realm that we we have to deal with and that that is sometimes a good thing right because like Faveka talks about this reciprocally narrowing where you're you're focused on oh i always get this theory right I'm like yeah maybe maybe that was the right decision like 15 years ago but after 15 years there might be a different brand that is way cheaper or whatever value that you want to ascribe way healthier uh that that you want to get the brand from right and so so getting stuck in in this understanding of well i i don't want to consider anything else because that's too much for me right like there's a negative in in that aspect of the equation but there's also a negative in in the aspect of well like now i'm going to have to consider the 150 brands or, or or types of of whatever cereal that are available and then well i could also eat bread <laughs> so and then i need to put something on the bread <laughs> and then <laughs> i could also do this right and 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 it's endless right like so, so we need we need to limit that consideration right and the the frame in which this was brought up to us initially was we when when we ask questions often we need to make a decision to go forward right and so we ask someone's decision uh, suggestion for for assisting us with with that decision making right so i have reduced my complexity to two choices and now i need i need you to to say whether this one is better for me or this one is better for me so so i can move forward in the world and at that point the last thing that a person wants to hear is have you considered because they have considered all the options already right and and in in modern times people have considered all the options and and getting outside of that frame is not respectful of the the care that they put in to their own decision making right, right. and then it's 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 okay to give a suggestion later on right if if that's appropriate to that person and like well you you to me this is important right like maybe you should consider that as well or or whatever right but that is after you give them the resolution to the problem right and if you're not giving them the solution to the problem what you're doing is you're inserting your priority over the priority of the individual that you're talking with. and i think that's right. the problem uh, that we kind of want to dance around today right that that and the equivalent equivocation on the word considering right so we're using it in two ways i mean i think everybody is like to be fair right it's not a not not a not a particular specific problem right but a consideration is an object in the world right or or an an object of thought Right, like oh, well, we're going to think about these these decisions or these thoughts or these emotions or these feelings or whatever, right? Or this situation, whatever it is. Okay, being considerate towards someone is a different operation entirely, <laughs> and so giving people considerations, in other words, more choices, more things to think about, is not necessarily respectful of their cognitive load their cognitive capacity, right? Or their, the framing that they're, that they're trying to keep intact. It's perfectly valid to say, well, I don't understand your choices. Can you explain to me how you got there, right? But then you're not pretending to give them an answer that they didn't ask for, for example, which is really, that's considerate, right? Asking somebody, hey, did, I, I, you know, right? are you sure it's just between those two things? Like, have you thought about, just asking somebody, have you thought about this? Sure, it, you know, and maybe they haven't, and maybe that's useful. But answering them with, well, really, you should consider the global impact of your decision to go to Walmart. Like, no, <laughs> no, I just asked you, should I go to Walmart? Like, it's not that hard, 
right? And so to be considerate towards the person is to help to answer their initial question. If you want to reframe it later, to Manuel's point, reframe it later. But first, cooperate with them. Like, and this, this considerations thing is just a way of rebelling. It's another way of rebelling. And it's a big problem. Like people are running into this left, right, and center, especially lately. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of it's just leftover anxiety and stress from, from the fake news virus scam garbage. And we're just suffering from that left, right, and center. Like people are on edge and they're anxious and they're rebelling against everything because who knows what you should rebel against and what you shouldn't. Like I'm, I'm right there with you. Like that's, a, that's difficult, right? We've been thrown into a world of too many choices. And now we're just seeing choices everywhere. And we're like, well, I'm going to put everybody in the same distress I'm, I'm in by giving them more choices than they need to have. Right? And, and look, I mean, sometimes people need more choices. Are you sure you know when, though? Is that, is it, are you really sure that you know what's in their mind well enough to know that they need all these extra choices? It, it, really? Yeah. And and so that that's one part. And it's like if when when you're giving someone a consideration, do you know where you're coming from, right? Like what are what are you trying to achieve when when you're giving this consideration, right? Because when when you're giving a consideration, right? There's there there well you 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 take someone out of a binary decision, right? Which which is fine theoretically right but the, the dimension that you're adding right like is coloring the decision right like it's changing the variables into into a way and there's a likelihood that there's a personal motive in the way that you're you're changing the variables right like so so what what you're doing in some sense is you're you're trying to get the order to express something that you want or, or that you think is right. And and that might be the right thing to do, but is it the right thing? I mean, the, the thing that you want to express might be right, but is it the right thing to do to use the other person to get that manifested in the world? And I, I would argue no, right? Like pe people have a hard time making decisions, right? Like, so when when you're making someone's uh, frame bigger what you're ex implicitly saying is well i don't think you you're capable of making this decision correctly but then how are they supposed to know how to evaluate the new framing and make the decision correctly in the new frame because like if you already judge them incapable of doing that how can you get them to participate in in the other framing correctly yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that is the problem of respecting boundaries and decision making. And, you know, look, I mean, I've got a video on, on binary thinking and you don't want to get stuck in binary thinking. And I say clearly in the video, you also often need to use a binary to make a decision. Like that is required. So I'm not saying you can't ever use a binary, right? But getting stuck in binary thinking is different. It's, like dualism is a good example saying, and people do this all the time, right? They say, well, I'm not a dualist, but between these two things, it's like, well, then you're a dualist. Like you pick two things, it's not hard. And so people project this stuff out. They're projecting their intents and, and, and their reasonings and their colorings of the world out onto others with this consideration thing. And I don't think it's a, a, valid, a valid way to uh, interact with people. Like, I, I don't feel it's at all, you know, something that you should be doing. I mean, I think it's a projection of your own internal anger, resentment, insecurity, whatever. And there's a lot of that projection. There's a lot of that insecurity projection going on. And I don't know why people are so, um, um, you know, are so stuck on that. But, um, they, they seem to be stuck on it. Like, why do you care about other people and what they're doing in the world such that you're, you want to impose your, your considerations on them, right? Because your considerations are yours. The things that you find important in life are, are, 
are things that you personally find important in life. And that's fine. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and that's a, that's part of the issue is that people are not respecting the boundaries of where they end and other people begin. And that's really important. You can't just take everything that's important to you and cast it on every other person that you find. That's not appropriate. Like there are boundaries in the world for a reason. And there are interactions in the world that are important to maintain. And you can't just mix up what's in your head with what other what should be in other people's heads. And that just destroys their focus. And it doesn't allow them to do things in the world. It, it forces them into a situation where they can't uh, they can't interact correctly. So that that's part of this consideration. If it's projection, not all of it is, but a lot of it seems to be, then then there's a problem. Like if 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 the issue is that you need to buy something at the store, the global consideration of whether or not you should buy it at Walmart is not valid. You've already decided to buy things. Like if you're not buying things, then the global consideration might be more important. But you've already narrowed down the, the possibilities. Like why are people dragging in other things? Yeah, I, I think we also have to consider uh, the agency of the other person, right? So if if your judgment truly is this person has not considered this option, then what you want to do is you want to give that person the capacity to uh, realize a way into the perspective that they're missing. And so you, you want to grant them the insight and the capability to resolve this issue for themselves. And when, when you're just handing them the frame, right? Like, oh, this, this is the solution that you should think of. You're, you're shortcutting that process. You, you're not letting them step through the, the considerations themselves, but, but you're handing them, them right? Because one of the issues that I have with, with people in, in modern times is they, they, they don't justify their positions very well, right? because they, they don't have means to, to get to a, a proper justification of, of, of their position. And so what that means is that we, we haven't cultivated that skill, right? Like, and, and what we want to do, right? Like if we want to truly help the individual is, is help them cultivate the skill of, of getting in, into a certain insight, right? So if you think consideration of uh, the impact on the global economy when going to Walmart or whatever is important, then get to the point that the person can make that important to themselves, right? In, in a relevant way. Instead of um, implying that this is important and, and letting them participate in, in, in this game that you're effectively playing. Well, for forcing them to participate. And I did want to address this, uh, CW Weeks. What do you guys think of Andrew Basden's paradigm for research as a rule of thumb for such uh, interaction, right? And this is listen, affirm, critique, enrich. Um, look, I mean, if you need procedures to tell you to participate in the world, I mean, then you need procedures to tell you to participate in the world. That, that's great. Um, that's not the optimal state. Right. The optimal state is not to need the procedures, but to be able to engage poetically with everything instead. And then you can drop the procedures. And procedures are helpful because they do provide that stepping stone. So that's not a no procedure statement. It's a yes, but also. And I don't think most people should need that. Like most people should learn to listen uh, first. And uh, I don't know how you affirm things. I, I really don't. Uh, most people don't seem to bother. Uh, I, I don't think critique is valid. I think acceptance is more important. Um, feedback might be a better word. Uh, enrich, yeah, if you can. Like a, a lot of this stuff is assuming that people can do things that probably they actually can't do. There is a lot of people who cannot have a valid critique of something. A lot of people. So for example, 
um, you can you can go and say, well, the reason why Elon Musk put a poll about letting Trump back on Twitter was, okay, let me explain something to you, son. You don't know. You ain't got no idea. In fact, you probably don't know all the possible reasons. You've probably reduced this problem to, well, I know why Elon Musk put that poll up about Trump on Twitter. No, you don't. First of all, if you think it's a one reason, you're an idiot. Sorry, you just are. There's lots of good reasons to do that. Uh, one of them is free press, <clears throat> which, you know, to some extent is a genius move for a company you just paid $44 billion for it with very little hope of recouping most of that money. Um, another reason uh, is engagement on the platform as such, <clears throat> because that increases the value of the platform irrespective of the free press. That's two reasons. Another reason is to gauge the zeitgeist of the people on the platform, <clears throat> right? And because you're getting the free press from the news, you're also gauging the zeitgeist of the people who aren't on the platform at the same time. That's four reasons. Um, I, I don't think I have all the reasons, okay? If you reduced it to one, you're wrong. Almost no decisions that people make, especially people, highly successful people like Elon Musk make, are about one thing. Uh, because that's inefficient and suboptimal and antithetical to progress. In order to progress, you got to wrap things up so that you can move forward rapidly. Uh, this whole like, well, I'm going to make a dollar by working an hour thing won't get you very far. Not that you shouldn't do it, right? But it's not going to get you Elon Musk wealthy. That's for sure. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody should be Elon Musk wealthy. <laughs> like, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm, I'm poor and living in the woods myself, literally. So but whatever, right? Like, it's not a big deal. But to criticize somebody, excuse me, to criticize somebody that successful on something you just don't have the expertise to criticize them on is absurd, right? And Chris Kavanaugh did this, and I actually, you know, kind of told him, like, yeah, he's trolling you because basically you're not smart enough to understand what's going on. And that's true. Sorry, he's just not smart enough. And that's the and that's the problem um, yeah. is that we often think we can criticize. We often think we can understand what other people are saying. We often think we can affirm it. Right. And, and often people are inarticulate and they can't restate what I just said. Oh, fair enough. I don't hold it against them. That's normal. Like I it's OK. Like I'm not upset when people can't do that. I'm upset when they clearly don't get the point, but you know, and, and whatever. That's my flaw. But but it is it is sort of important to make those those distinctions. Yeah, and I, I think when when we're taking some some lists like that, right? Like listen, affirm, critique, and rich, right? It's important to realize that those are options, right? And have some sense of of what it means to do these things, right? So I I'm allergic to to having a procedure uh, be and be a response right because getting into a procedure as well is 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 in some sense condescending it's breaking the flow of the conversation uh, it's it's adding well it might add unnecessary distraction right like like um, there's like mark said right like these things are not easy to to critique, but also to affirm, right? Like when when I say something, you you better damn well know what I'm saying <laughs> before you affirm me, because you if if you affirm <laughs> the wrong thing, I'll get upset because like like now you're you're implying that you understood me and you didn't. Like what what's going on there, right? So so these 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 things have have their inherent danger, right? And I think. The best answer is humility. When, when, when we're humble, right? Like, when when someone asks us to make to for an opinion between A and B, right? Like, we can either say like I can't answer the question for whatever reason, or you say A or B because you think A or B is good, and you should you should have A or B with a reason for A or B, right? You you shouldn't just say A or B. Because you want to give an answer, 
right? Like you, you should you should have a justified reason for for that answer. Else you say like I can't make a justified decision between these two, right? Like I I, I just don't know how to pick. And and so when when we're talking from humility, right? Like we're we're talking from a place of 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 not know, right? Like not certain. And I think I think when when we're talking about techniques or whatever, like that they should promote the not knowingness, right? Like so the listening is is in some sense it's implicit in that if you listen, <laughs> then you know <laughs> and therefore you can do these other things, right? But but uh yeah, like and 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 sometimes it doesn't matter, right? Like like sometimes a person just doesn't want to make the decision. They, they just don't wanna they don't want to do it and and what they're actually asking for is not for you to to find a or b better but to help them out of their stuckness yeah exactly <clears throat> um yeah it's and it really is about imposing values on others more often than not I mean, not all the time but but fairly often and that's it's a big it's a big issue like you know are you sure that by saying what you're saying, you aren't just imposing your values on other people unnecessarily because maybe that's maybe that's the issue. Like maybe maybe there's something inside of you that's putting you in a situation that's um, unhelpful, right, to the other person. So you're trying to be considerate of them, but in fact, you're just doing something that's projecting into them. Uh, and, and and are we really always aware that we're not actually rational most of the time? Like we, I, and the problem is that signals out there everywhere. Oh, people are rational. No, they're not. That's just wrong. There's no experimental evidence that says anything other than we're almost never rational about anything ever. It's actually what the experiment, scientific experiments say. And you can, well, replication crisis in science gets it. Okay. But you don't have any evidence that people are rational most of the time when they're making their decisions. Um, and, and you don't have any evidence that they can be. Because if you look on an fMRI, for example, or using some other scanning method, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to do the things that we tend to classify as rational. Most of the time, we're working on automatic pilot, baby. And we don't know what we're projecting. We have no idea. Because we, we, we're, we're not really paying attention that much to what the results of what we're saying actually are and how we feel about them. And often uh, we don't appreciate, um, you know, that people aren't obligated, right? So it was funny, uh, BOM a few months ago, somebody came in and they said, oh, it's explain to me the meaning crisis. And so, you know, I gave, I gave my quick explanation and then somebody else gave a very similar, you know, explanation We're using completely different framing and words, which is great, wonderful. And he said, well, I don't understand. And it was like, okay, but I'm not obligated to explain something in a way that you can understand. Like that's not, there's no law that says that I have to answer your question. There's no law that says I have to answer a question in the way that you can understand it. Uh, and there's no law that says I have to keep trying to answer your question until you understand it. I may be incapable of doing that. You may be incapable of understanding me. I, there's no obligation there. And that's where you know, people get a lot wrapped up in that. Oh, you need to do this because of this, or you need to do that because of that. Really? Are you sure? And when you're saying because of this and because of that, is that your real motivation, right? Or are you projecting that on other people? Like if something's not important to me, then you saying you have to do this because of this is not valid. I, that's not important to me. Like, I don't have to worry about the state of the global supply chain because I'm going to Walmart. I, I don't have to do that. It's not important to me. What's important to me is what I need to get a Walmart, you know, and, and whether or not I should shop at Walmart or Target or something, whatever, whatever arbitrary set of decisions you want to make. And the relevancy is important. It's the most important thing. I mean, John Verveke talks about it all the time for a reason, because that's the hard problem. Rationality is not the hard problem. I agree. A hard problem is what's relevant and what should we pay attention to? And that's part of flattening the world. When we try to make everything relevant and everyone relevant, well, this point of view is really relevant to me. 
And then that's not, well, why are you privileging that person over all the other people who's, who have points of view? Well, that's a good question. I bet you can't explain that, all right? And it gets really difficult really fast. And that's a problem. Like these are actual problems in the world that people run into. And making it worse is not making it better. So you have to contain things in the frame that they're at instead of ever expanding them out. And the expansion in a way is actually a flattening. Oh, we want to consider everything all at once. No, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to consider the things that I've narrowed down to consider. And, and if that's, you know, not accounting for something, then I will suffer the consequences of that. Don't you worry. It's okay. Right. And, and the problem with, with reframing is your, there's unintended consequences, right? So, um, I, I had this problem or, or I have this problem all the time with people, right? Where, uh, they, they change the subject of the conversation by, by doing this reframe, right? Like, so, so there, there is this conversation going on about something and then, but what about this, right? Like, have you considered this? And it's like, like, I, I now have two options, right? Like I, I have to reject you, which, which is uh, engage in a conflict effectively, right? Or the conversation has to go to that subject, right? Like that, that substream of, uh, of what's going on. And, and this stuff happens all the time, right? And I'm, I'm not saying it's a problem to change, uh, the conversation, right? But I, I think if you, if you say, have you considered, it's better to say, I want to talk about this part, right? And then you're, you're standing behind it, right? Like it's, it's, it's not an implicit, well, like it's not a criticism, right? Because if, if you're asking for, have you considered, right? Like you're implicitly saying, well, I don't see this being accounted for. And I, I, I think you should account for it, right? Like, cause, cause you're making it relevant, right? Like saying, saying you should consider something is, is making it relevant. And you, there, there's two ways in which things can be relevant, right? Like when, when you have this highly theoretical, uh, framing where you're just trying to explain everything, right? Like you want to have this universal theory that accounts for every problem in the universe then yes, right? Like everything can be added and, and everything has to be included and therefore it's relevant, right? But when you're just trying to do something in, in the here and now, like making a decision whether to go to Walmart or not, there, there's only a really limited set of things that are relevant, right? Like, so have you considered whether you have gas in your car or have you considered whether you brought your money? Right, like things like that, right? These are relevant, but they're only relevant if you're assuming that the person hasn't done them. Right? Like and 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 so there's an implicit uh criticism in there, right? Like and and you 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 yeah, like and you're 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 reframing the situation, right? Like right. Uh, like oh now I have to worry about whether I have gas in the car or I now I have to worry about this, right? Like, so you're, you're putting an obligation upon the other person uh, by, by doing that reframing. Yeah. And, and also, so the thing that's been occurring to me now is um, there's a tyranny of universalism and materialism. And if you're a materialist and you're trying to universalize, what you're really trying to do is get equality. And you're trying to not exclude. You're saying, oh, well, you know, look, 80%, uh, you're only considering 80% of the people or 80% of the problem or you, you're using 80% of this. It's like, well, yeah, but I am a pragmatist. I understand the losses are inevitable. And so 80% is pretty damn good from my perspective. And if you want to care about the 20%, well, you can go do that. But 
making me care about the 20% is that's a transgression. Like if you want to, if you want to care for the lepers, go care for the damn lepers. Don't, but don't get on my ass because I'm not caring for the damn lepers. Like what the hell? Like it, different people should be doing different things. The problem with that is that you get too spread out and then nobody wants to cooperate anymore. Fair enough. That's why you build structures, right? That's what structures are for. They're to enable cooperation between people and, and let them take advantage of their skill sets. And so there's a tyranny in trying to measure everything and then trying to account for the margin, as Peugeot would say, right? So when you say, oh, well, you know, look, your, your ethical system requires 130 IQ, right? This is roughly the discussion that, that Peterson had with Harris in the fourth debate that they did there uh, of those initial four debates. And um, what about the other people? Right. And then my, my point is, well, ethics has to include everybody or it's not ethics. It's just that simple. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody can equally involve themselves in the pursuit of ethics. And it doesn't mean everybody is an equal ethical agent. It just means that ethics has to account for everybody. But most other things don't. Maybe no other things do or maybe no other things can because there's a lot of randomness out there right? Like you can't expect everybody to be able to engage with the Bible equally. You can't expect everybody to be able to engage with meditation equally. You can't expect everybody to be able to engage with a deep philosophical discussion equally. You can't expect everybody to be able to understand what you're talking about. And you can't expect yourself to be able to explain it to anybody. I think that's a ridiculously high bar. It's totally insane and it's unhelpful. It's just not reasonable request for you to be able to do something for everybody all at once. That's not reasonable. And we tend to project our care for the marginalized and turn that into a reason to change everything. And that's not valid. If you care for the marginalized, you go do that. I support you, right? I'm not also going to do that. I'm going to care for the largest number that I can care for because that's my ethos. That's where I'm at. It's a different place. There's nothing wrong with either, right? But there is something wrong if you're saying you need to care about these 20, 20% in your system. No, I don't. My system is okay if it doesn't care about the 20%. And, and that's, the, that's the problem. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not only whether you should care about the twenty percent. It's it's also we we can't do everything all the time all at once. Like there's there's this thing about about combinatorial explosion, right? Like if if everybody's gonna have to deal with with your philosophy and with reading the Bible and with familiarizing themselves with the eastern traditions and with getting up to date on the latest soccer match like 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 how do we privilege things right like like it's not good to have everybody do everything and and we shouldn't want to and like the in, in the end we we tell people things so that they can act in the world right so all they need to understand are the implications to their life and if if we go beyond that right and uh, then we're, we're making a transgression right like we 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 can't make people do things right like but we we want to provide the tools for people to make the right decision right um and you you want to pick freedom's lunch because like Sure. So it's we are all mar marginalized. What did I fall into? Well, look, I mean, you fell into creation. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> if you want to play the game of equality, universalization, and materialism, by some measure, we are all marginalized on more than, about on more than one axis. All of us. Now what? 
This is the problem with equality. Like making universal statements is lovely, but it cannot tell you anything about how to act in the world. So the fact that we're all marginalized doesn't help us understand anything, even though it's true, right? Truth is not going to save you, right? Truth, truth is a is a state uh, of 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 a of a statement or a fact or or a set of observations that is thoroughly unhelpful by itself, because the truth of something doesn't tell you what to do about it. This is roughly speaking the Isaac Gap Hume guillotine. If you haven't looked it up. You can look up Isot Gap or Hume Guillotine, right? And I, I like this. I like this follow-up, right? Equality is the reductionist view of the fruit of living, an example of how Christ loved his disciples, right? It's re, the reductionist view is also the flattening of the world. And again, this is what part of what we're talking about. When you try to flatten the world. When you try to do this, oh, excellent, yes, materialist reduction, reductionist, right, or physicalist, reductionist physicalist is what John Verveke calls it. When you do that, that ends up in equality, and equality is not the state that we have unless evolution is wrong. Like all parts of evolutionary theory have to be wrong for equality to be true. <clears throat> That's why I don't think equality is true. I think equality is antithetical to evolution, and I believe in the observation of evolution, right? When you flatten the world, right, and that's actually one thing we're dealing with now, when you flatten the world to know there's only one hierarchy with Christ at the top, and then we're all at the bottom, you create a bunch of problems. Like, you can't cooperate with other people to do things. Because in order to cooperate with other people, you need to build a tiny hierarchy beneath Christ in order to create a structure and rules and boundaries, right, and authorities and get leaders in there, you know, and gender leadership in order to be more efficient at building something bigger than one person can build. So that's a mini hierarchy underneath the larger hierarchy. When you ignore that and you squish the world, you run into all kinds of problems. This is part of the problem, I think, with this idea of Christian anarchy, right? They don't want to do things. Right? They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to build something bigger than themselves necessarily or, or bigger than, we'll say, their immediate family or something. And so they say, oh, anarchy, right? And, and you know, really they're talking about Christian pacifism and they don't, you know, they don't take responsibility. Fine, fair enough, right? But they don't really understand. Assisting yourself with the anarchists is a bad idea because they're extremely violent and they've caused revolutions. Like the way you cause a revolution, historically speaking, is you get the anarchists upset, which isn't really hard, um, and invite them into your place, right? And then they they start the revolution. Then the revolution, the true revolutionaries, uh, come come to the fore. They shoot all the anarchists, by the way, typically, uh, and, and then they take over, right? And then maybe somebody else takes over because it's usually the course of these revolutions, right? It's, when you actually dig into history, you kind of see this pattern. And so you you... You know, you can't just recognize one hierarchy in the world. There are many hierarchies, and we have to participate in many of them. We can't just flatten the world so that we can have one identity. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just a follower of Jesus and a reader of the Bible or a follower of Muhammad or, you know, I, I, I follow the Tao or whatever the heck it is. You can't just reduce the world to that. You have to live in it with other people, with nature, and with yourself. You don't know yourself that well. You don't know what you're projecting on. You don't know what you're. What, what sorts of damage you're doing by 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 just running around in the world and, and spewing whatever you're spewing all over the place. You have no idea. And and it's true for all of us. So, you know, it's a problem. Um, so, so, yeah, like I, I want to take that into to tell us, right, which which is purpose or, or calling. Right. So so there's there's an identity that that you get by pursuing a goal. and um, that pursuing of the goal, like going to Walmart, puts you in a relevance frame, right? Like now, now you can discern things that are relevant to you, and you can discern things that that are irrelevant to you. And when when you have that relevance framing, now you you can plan a path to there, right? And then when you have the path, right, like when when you're capable of manifesting what you want to manifest, 
then you can start being considerate of things, right? Like you, you can say, well, like maybe I don't want to take this highway, right? Like I want to have the scenic route, right? Like I want to be considerate of, of my mental health, right? I, like I want to have this music playing, to, right? But but you can't start with with the music. You can't start with the, and then right, like like there, there's there's a there's a limit there, right? Like you you you. Like at at a certain point, you need to go to the Walmart, right? And, and you're going to need to be among people, and you're going to need to make decisions in there. And so there's all of this this bad stuff, right? Or or or, or stuff that you could be considerate about, but but now you're going to have to reject being considerate in order to actually achieve your goal. And and so yeah, like we 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 have to see. Also, in in how we're affecting ourselves with our considerations, right? Like, because because when I'm I'm trying to be considerate of some things, right? Like, I'm I'm gonna manifest some things in the world, and I'm also not gonna manifest other things in the world, right? So, if 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 I wanna take the scenic route, right? Like, I have to take extra time traveling right and that extra time traveling i can't spend on being with my family or whatever right like this there's, there's all of these costs in 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 that determination right and th and then there's also well like if if i take 15 minutes preparing for for going to walmart right like because i want to have everything perfect then that 15 minutes i need I need to be considerate of the consequences of my consideration because now I have to spend 15 minutes every every time I want to take a trip, right? And and that might involve me not wanting to do the preparations and instead of being hesitant to do the trip, I now become hesitant to do the preparations and I, I've moved the problem a step back. Yeah, ex <clears throat> exactly. I mean, I think... A lot of this gets wrapped up in in this flattening of the language and of of the world, and not understanding the difference between consideration of people and consideration of things or ideas, right? Like being considerate towards somebody is different from giving things consideration. That that's totally different, and we're conflating the two out of what we were talking about before: tolerance, right, or kindness, or compassion, or whatever, which is not an untrammeled pure good in the world. It's not. Like, I'm sorry. You can't just solve all the problems by saying, well, I'm just going to meet everybody with love and compassion. It's not going to work. It's not even an option. And and by doing that, you're condescending to people. Like, and maybe that's okay, but not in that case. Not if you're doing it prejudgmentally before you've even met them or know what they're about. Um, not pushing back. I'm, Peterson makes this point over and over again. I don't understand why this is a, a mystery to people. Yeah. Being nice to people weakens them. Do you want weak people? Because that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Do you want ants? That's how you get ants. Do you want weak people? That's how you get weak people. And, um, you know, I, I, it's just frustrating because people are so upset about having to do the work. And that's really what this boils down to. People are lazy. You know, thinking is hard. And nobody wants to do the work. And like, fair enough. I get it. Uh, but don't be mad at people who are doing the work. Because it's hard and they're having a rough day. You know, <laughs> like, like doing doing the work is 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 difficult. And tolerance can certainly be negligence. Uh, that that is true, Ethan. Uh, Ethan's a little on the extreme side of the tolerance bad bad uh, uh, equation, in my opinion. However, we love Ethan, and he's not necessarily wrong. So yeah, and, I, and I think I, he's also in the wrong live stream. <laughs> I know you should have put that in the other live stream. Uh, is consideration a niceness the same thing, I guess, of my, in my mind, they're not, right? Yeah, I mean, look, it's you're not always helping people when you're being nice to them, right? period, end of statement. I'm sorry. And can I tell you when that is? No, I'm sorry. I can't tell you when that is. You've put in the hard work yourself. Like, really? I'm not joking. It's hard. And that's why you need to have grace towards others when that you perceive that they do it wrong. Because A, maybe you're wrong and they did it right. And B, maybe they screwed up, but we all screw up. 
like, it's not it's not that hard. Like, do you have the same grace for the person doing the action as you have for the victim? There's a good question to ask yourself. Because maybe the person that you perceive as a victim was actually victimized, but the person you perceive as the perpetrator of that victimization made a mistake. Who should you have more uh, uh, compassion for? Who should you have more grace for? Who should who should you you know punish in that situation? I, these are hard things. I'm not proposing answers, but I'm saying, did you are you spreading the grace around equally? Are you sure, or or are you just picking sides? Because I think you're picking sides, and you're arbitrarily picking the side of the underdog in all cases, which is elevating the margin. Which you know, if you listen to Peugeot. Jonathan Peugeot, no, don't do that. Can't make the margin the center. You can't focus on it to the exclusion of everything that isn't in the margin. That is an error. That is a mistake. Do not do that. It's bad. Flat right. out. Which, which, which does not mean don't serve the margin, right? But maybe it means don't serve the margin by lifting it up to the center or, or by shining the light on it. Right, like maybe what the margin needs is is to have a safe space on the margin instead of a spotlight on it. Uh, so there's there's many ways to resolve the issue, right? Um, and I I think there's a third victim, right? Like there, there's there's the person that made the mistake, right? There's the person that's being victimized, but then there's, there's also the situation, right? Like and I I think we're we're forgetting. The situation, which involves more people, right? Because there's other people that are judging what what is happening and and interceding, right? And so, what 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 is the thing that you want to protect, right? Like what what is the thing that 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 rectifies or, or redeems what just happened, right? Because that that's where you want to go. Well, do you, do you want to redeem by redirecting all the attention towards the transgression, right? Or do you want to redeem the situation by actually getting to a resolution and having everybody feeling satisfied that that they they were a part of manifesting something good in the world, right? And right. and I I think that we're we're getting too too close to this personal sense of justice. Like, oh, what 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 should happen is that this person should feel Heard or it's, or it's case individualism, case. right? And we're prejudging that there's a victim, and we're prejudging who the perpetrator is, and maybe that's not what happened. Like maybe your read on the situation is just freaking wrong, and maybe you're casting something into the future that hasn't happened. But we don't want a bad leader. Did you have any leader? Like, is is that even valid until you have a leader? How do you know they're bad or not until they've led the thing? I don't, I don't get it. I, I did want to address this. I wanted to address this. Um, uh, this issue, right? Without a bridging ethic, competing ethics can't tolerate without risking harm. The people preaching tolerance are also undermining America's bridging standard, the Bill of Rights. Yeah, well, look, I would say you don't need individual ethics. It's just not necessary. Like, it's just not a requirement. Like, ethics should be a universal. And that's a better way to do it. Now, ethics is the art of dealing with the conflict of virtues and values in the moment. And that resolves that issue. Uh, and the, I would say, morality is the implementation of that, right? So um, I think that's, you know, super important to uh, realize and, and engage with. Um, you, you, you don't want to get stuck in a continual uh, set of deconstructions. I, I don't think that's useful. Um, and you can, if you start giving everybody individual decisions, individual responsibilities, individual ethics, it, right? Because you can't have competing ethics because who is to decide what a valid ethic is and what size uh, to, uh, uh, you know, what, what size to engage in? Like, is if 40 people get together and decide this is their ethic, is that okay? And then 40 other people get together and they have a competing at like, that's not okay. How, it's all too arbitrary. So 
You can't keep fractionating things down to the level of the individual. It's one of the areas that I disagree with Peterson on is this emphasis on the individual, right? Uh, because it doesn't allow for ethics. Like you can't be an ethical agent and an individual. Like you got to pick one. It, ethics doesn't make any sense to a single person. It can't. And also a single person can't embody ethics because it involves the consideration of a bunch of people that you cannot meet and are never going to meet and are never going to be able to know. But your actions affect all of them. That's why you follow ethics. And, and that's the problem. So, yeah, I think we should consider the state of people we're interacting with. And like, I don't, I don't know if we're, we're talking about the, a state in the United States or a state like mental state or whatever, but in, in, in some sense, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like, yes, right? Like we need to personalize our relationships, right? Like we, we need to find intimacy within our relationships. But there's also an element in which people are fulfilling a role, right? Like, and, and in, in that sense, they're, they're an object participating in a, a schema, right? So, so depending on, on what, we're, what, what game we're playing, what are we trying to do, right? Like, are we in a board meeting and like, is, is, is the director talking and like, should the secretary then have their say? Well, no, right? Like, e even if they're upset, right? Like, they go outside and be upset outside, right? So there, there, there is a sense in which considering the state is appropriate in 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 certain types of interaction, and, and other types of interaction are privileging something else to be manifested. And and so, I think what we consider is, is a consequence of, of what are we doing. Yeah, and I think, I think that, you know, the question of ethics and morality is a big question. And we've actually covered that here. Um, it, it was a long conversation, uh, but it was a good one. Uh, and it, it's not my only coverage of it. Uh, but I think the problem is the, the way people seem to be using the term is ethics is the ideal or the idos or the platonic form, and morality is the implementation. And I think framing it backwards is, is part of the confusion. Uh, and I think value is underneath your ethics. Uh, and, and that's, it's not shared ethics, it's shared ethic. Like, again, it has to be a universal. Otherwise, it doesn't actually work. And that's really the, the issue for me, um, is that we're very confused about these things. And I, yeah. I, so, I, so no, I know I, that... I want, I want to take that remark a little bit. So, so Go ahead. The, 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 the implication... You got to take Ethan's response, too, afterwards. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll take Ethan's response as well. So I, I think the implication of this, right, is... Uh, we can't exchange value without shared ethics. It's like, no, like the, the value <laughs> is in one person and another person, right? So, so all, all you need to do is, is have a framework, right? Not an ethic, but a framework that allows cooperation, right? right. Now, if you want to say, well, it's suboptimal, right? Like that, that cooperation could be organized differently, right? It could, could flow down from the attic and then it would be natural in some sense, right? Mm -hmm. Then yes, but but no, we can have cooperation, right? Like we trade with China. Like, <laughs> like we're we're not in agreement with China's ethical system as, as the West. Uh, but that doesn't that doesn't stop us from doing a whole bunch of things with them. And then yeah <laughs> meta meta attic. Okay. Yes, we add meta and, and then we add matter again, and then we have solved it. Like that, that's just the perfect solution. Matt, it, it solves all problems, can, can confirm. I have a video on that, obviously, on navigating patterns, because I hate, hate the word meta. It's being so misused, and it's all based on a publisher's uh, marketing scam. Congratulations for falling for a publishing marketing scam, you Muppets. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I, I, I think that 
no, you can't be an individual and part of an ethical collective. No, you, you can't. Like, actually can't. Like, no, that's not a valid way of behaving in the language. The word doesn't, the words don't fit together. I think that that really is the problem, is that ethics has to be universal or it doesn't work. And, so, and yeah, if, if I, I want to I want to frame this a little bit, right? So <laughs> I'm accurately describing you as an actual Muppet and you're taking offense. You should be thrilled that somebody's finally recognized your true self. I, 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 yeah, like if you identify as a Muppet, you can, you can have an ethic. You can have the Muppet ethic with the rest of us. We're all Muppets. <laughs> Great. But, 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 yeah. So, so I think you can be a person and in an ethical system, right? But the individual implies that there's an individual component to the ethical system. Like that. And, and and no relationship. Like when you say individual, you are purposely separating yourself from the relations you have in the wider world. And I think that is an invalid frame. In other words, there's no such thing as an individual, really. Like we were all born into creation or a creation, and we're stuck with the results of that, for better or for worse, right? And you can get all Calvinist about it and say, aha. Like uh, power of God, and therefore, however, these Calvinists like to like to couch these crazy determinism arguments. Uh, and fair enough, like maybe you should, uh, but you you were born, and as far as anybody knows, you didn't have a choice in that, and so you have to deal with that fact. And so you're not an individual because you couldn't take care of yourself when you were born, right? So your parents had all kinds of imprinting on you that you can't possibly even begin to understand, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's also bad, but you know, like it's mostly good, and and you can modify some of that. Yay! In the moment, journaling, meditation, contemplation, right? Whatever, Pr prayer, what going to church, right? Uh, interacting with other people and say, oh, that other person doesn't act like I remember my parents acting. Maybe I can act differently too, right? Like, but 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 you're still subject to all of those things. Like you weren't dropped in this world conscious with no history. That didn't happen, so therefore you're not an individual, and uh, and that's and th and that's the problem. Now, the pro the problem of individualism, right? I can't escape being an individual. I'm the only proof I have. That's not true. Uh, not being an owner of the self doesn't mean I don't exist. I steward my life. Ownership is a myth. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> you know, on on. If ownership is a myth, then you don't own yourself. Uh, and, I, and I think actually, uh, oddly, ownership is not a myth, but you also don't own yourself. Like, it's not just you and that head of yours. That's what you realize when you start meditating. Uh, Verveke talks about this. Verveke's meditation course is just excellent. Um, he talks about this, right? You close your eyes and suddenly you realize there's all kinds of stuff going on in my head that I don't normally engage in. What is happening? Um, why is this going on? And then over time, through meditation, contemplation, right, reflection, things like that, you can gain more control over some of that. You don't gain complete control, but you know, self-control is a, a good place to start. And I mean, you own things in that you are responsible for your body because you own it. Like it's something that you need to care for. Um, and and you, for your actions as well. Right. You own your actions as an agent in the world. It's something you need to own and take responsibility for, right? As difficult as that may be. Um, th these are definitely things that you own. And you have to take them seriously in some sense or things are going to go horribly wrong for you. This is part of Jordan Peterson's message. And that's the interesting thing to me. Like Peterson kind of clear about all this. Uh, and I don't, I mean, people hear stuff from Peterson and everyone's hearing, you know, slightly different things, I'm sure. But yeah, a lot of people are missing sort of larger message. Uh, and that's part of his message is that you don't know what you're up to. <laughs> you don't know what's going on in your head. You don't know what drives every action that you take, but you're still responsible for those actions. And, and that's, um, you know, that's important to acknowledge. 
you're an agent in the world and therefore, right, if you go and on YouTube and you get a YouTube audience, you have some responsibility for having gathered that YouTube audience, you know, and if you don't interact with them, like you never answer your comments or something, then that's going to go away and you're going to create anger and resentment and right, righteous anger and resentment in that case because you didn't care for your audience correctly. Uh, I try not to make that mistake. I try to answer all my uh, all my stuff. Um, and <laughs> I know. I, I Someone is funny. Okay, like, we'll, we'll put this one on. <laughs> Grim so Grizz said there is no agency and he's way funner than you. We are not as fun as Grim Grizz. That I can assure you. And we well, never so, will be. That I so, can also assure you. Sometimes we are, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes we get there, but like on, get on balance, <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna be that way that much of the time. Like he can, he's got special skills, man. I think, but, but I think yeah, like like that. that's that's the way that you're right, right? If, if you're funny, you're right. That's that's the way. You get. Yeah. Well, and but, and, but, and but talking about ownership and and, and, and responsibility and, and stuff like that, right? Like like part. Well, not part of like the full reason <laughs> we're doing these live streams is is to to get people to a place of of having a discernment, right? So that they can take these responsibilities, right? So consideration at first sight is a positive, right? It's like oh, they're like you're you're taking into account something that wasn't taken into account. Like that's that's good, right? Like that's just a natural plus. But there's there's second order effect, right? Like there's implications, right? Like we were talking about, like it's co costing resources, right? But it's it's also reframing things, right? Like it's 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 changing the consideration that you're making, right? So so there's there's a whole bunch of stuff happening, and if you're if you're not looking at all this other stuff that's happening, the decision that you're making is is influenced, right? Like you, you're biased in, in, in a certain direction. And that's that's what we're trying to overcome, right? Like, so, so when, when we're talking about ethics or whatever, right? Like, well, it, it is important to, to consider the connectedness of, of yourself with others, right? And, and, and then, well, when you have a system, right? Like, like you accept that you're in a system, well, then maybe the responsibility that you have, right, or the ownership that you have, extends beyond yourself towards that system, right? And so, so now you have a responsibility of participation in, in the system. But that participation in the system cannot be the same for every individual, right? Like because people don't don't have the same capacity, right? So, so now now you have to account for the di difference, different capacities and and the different priorities and and all of that stuff in your ethical system and i i got i got this thing right like we're, we're having a trade agreement right like a trade agreement is actually the opposite of an ethical system it is putting things into words right or procedures so that we don't have to be ethical in our behavior right like because because now we can outsource our ethics to the agreement so so it it is actually the opposite right like you're 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 effectively saying we don't trust that this will happen in the right way and therefore we need to police it. Yeah, no, that's 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 a good a good point. And I think uh you know, look, <laughs> stewardship and, and ownership. I don't I don't know how you're differentiating those two, but you're going to die. Nothing allows you to escape the reality of your impending death because it's, it's gonna happen. Um, and we need to know that. And I don't think we try to escape death. I, I don't. I, I don't think that's a correct way of looking at the world. I think that a stewardship is roughly something that you are apart from and taking responsibility for. And what we're talking about is something that you are a part of and taking responsibility for. Those are different fundamental states. And those states are important. You are embedded in a creation. Hopefully, you believe that being is good. Because that is an excellent foundation. And therefore, you take ownership, 
right? And responsibility for the things that are directly impacted by you. That includes your body. That includes your speech because you have control over that, right? It's a very stoic way of thinking about the world. Do you have perfect control? No. And it's also important to recognize that because mercy and grace are not just for other people. They're first for yourself. And when that doesn't happen, that's a problem. That's a big problem, okay? When you outsource your ethics or the results of your activity in the world to someone or something else, and I'm glad that you brought it up, your life's not, not your own, it's Christ's, yeah, in some sense, except he, he still says render unto Caesar. I don't know how that's possible at the same time. Like, and this is the problem with the concept like Christian anarchy, right? The reason why Christian anarchy can't exist is either you're misusing the term anarchy entirely or you're misunderstanding or misusing the term Christianity entirely because they have a contradictory nature, right? Either, you know, anarchy means no submission to authority, which is certainly the dictionary definition. Um, and, and if you want to say, no, it only means no submission to political authority, that's not what it means. But OK, even in that case, the problem comes comes with uh, uh, an, an issue. Right. And that issue is Christ didn't just say render unto Caesar. Right. He also submitted to the authorities of Rome and the authorities of the Jews, right? To the extent that he was crucified and, and killed, right? Like that happened. So if you want to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, you have to submit to the authority of Rome, which I would argue is political, and the authority of the Jewish political, local political system. And so... I don't see how you can be an anarchist in either of those situations. I don't think that the word anarchy is loaded at all. I don't think it has competing meanings. Words don't have meanings. See my video. Uh, meanings come from content plus context. Uh, but anarchy is pretty clear. And, but anarchy is a statement of an identification against, which is, I know, Manuel's favorite topic, identification against. All anarchy says is that I don't want to replace politics or political authority with anything. I just don't want the political authority, as though that's an option in the world. What do you think about identification against Emmanuel? How do you feel about it? Let well, me know. yes. So, so what 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 it's saying is there can only be individual authority, right? And then there's some some natural progression from individual authority to cooperation, right? So there's there, there's a presumption there. Uh, there's a presumption there that um, that some something beautiful will emerge, right? Like and so that that is dependent upon the ethical framework of the participants, right? But so there, there's there's a couple points there, right? So first of all, like now so those participants have to be fully submerged in the ethical framework and effectively be proper self-regulators because they're explicitly rejecting the authority of the externality to regulate themselves insofar as they, they're going to accept voluntarily the authority of others, which again, right? So, and then, well, so, so let's just say you're going to build structures from, from that point on, right? Which, which might be possible, right? Like, at, at a certain point, you, you get to a scaling point, right? Like you, you get to a point where the political authority, right, which is going to arise, which is like a contradiction, right? Like because we're all cooperating anyway, right? So, so we're, we're going to have to make a new political structure to, to govern ourselves. And, and that's going to be too far away from the individual, right? Like now there's going to be conflicts as a consequence of, of space and time between people, right? Like just because of the local culture. And so you're, you're going to run into the same problems that, that we have right now, right? Like maybe they get resolved better because we're all perfect Christians, which you can't be, by the way, but whatever, right? And and then we haven't even talked about the problems between 
those people <laughs> and the people around them, right? Because like if if you're flat out going to reject authority, like America is not going to like that, right? Like they're, they're going to consider you as a threat and probably rightfully so, right? Like well, you're, you're going to get violent. I mean, anarchists are violent for a reason because they don't want the state over them, but they don't have an option because they're identifying against. And yeah, when you identify against, you're not identifying for. And so you have a definitions problem, which is you're not defining yourself for something, you're just rejecting something. And if all you do is reject something, then you're not able to conform. And then that's the problem. What happens is anarchy, which is just the ultimate statement of individualism, right? Just the ultimate statement. I'm never going to cooperate with anybody else ever again under any circumstances because I can't because I'm rejecting the idea of a structure that would allow that to happen. That's actually all anarchy is the statement of. So then what happens is people get upset because their agency in the world is reduced because it's just them, because the anarchy is the ultimate statement of individualism. And then they say, well, I've got to find other people like me because we're tribal animals and we're not stupid. Like it's not us who's tribal animals. Tribalism is way before humans, by the way. People seem to confuse that. Humans became tribalistic. No. Long before humans evolved, tribalism was in the animal kingdom. And we were of the type of animals that were always tribal. And so the problem is that anarchy can't have categories because it's identification against. And a lot of words are like this, right? There are words that can't have categories. They defy categorization because they are identifying against the thing. Like Protestantism, when you identify against a thing, you just end up splintering forever. And let's uh, let's see if Ethan's uh, truck is quiet enough. Tell us, Ethan. Um, I'll, I'm going to pull over up here, but um, it's just not too loud. Why why don't uh, why doesn't Freedom Lunch come on and and talk in real time? Is it, some Ooh, good things challenge. to discuss there. Yeah, well, potentially. So, so Manuel, why don't you go on your diatribe again about why identifying against is a problem, other than the fact of categorization doesn't work, and, and that's, that's well, yeah. So, 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 when when we're identifying against, um, we're we're taking an identity that that is informed by the other, right? So, so everything we do is in relationship to to the other thing. And that means that, that we're being controlled by that, right? Like it, it has possession over our actions, uh, which it's effectively being a demon. It's, it's, it's the sort of Damocles that always hangs over you and, and you need to account for at all times, right? Because else you're, you're not identifying against anymore, right? So you, you can look an addiction again as identifying against being under the state of influence, right? And like, like all all the things that I do in the world are now in some way related to maintaining my capacity to get into that state, and uh, that that means that like I am totally possessed. Like I, I have no freedom, and depending on my ease of access to that, right? Like like every action I I perform is 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 going to be in order to manifest that, and then there's the, my ethics, right? Like we'll have to submit to that. <laughs> like it will necessarily have to be lesser than that because my highest value needs, <laughs> needs to be sustained. And, and like, it's not the ethics. And so you can, you can even take the, take that towards God, right? Like, so, so if, if you say God is everything, right? All the potential in the world, then you lose the connection to all the potential in the world, right? And now we're, we're talking about reciprocally narrowing to a subset, right? And and you, you literally end up in a state where you cannot see the potential. Like the, the potential is invisible, right? And so what what you want to do is you, you want to identify for something, right? In relationship to all the potential that there is so that you can use it when appropriate. Right, so so the, the the ideal state of being is is that you can take what is offered to you as an option and and manifest that in relation to to your goal, to your talents, right? Like your purpose, like your your calling, and and when when you can constantly do that, then you you enter into a state where 
you you can turn everything towards the good right like your 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 purpose is in service of the good and when when you're identified against something for whatever reason right like there's a bear crossing your path and <laughs> you have to take an identity against the bear like now you can no longer do the good right like now you have to deal with the bear right and 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 as long as long as you have to take that identi identity against the bear you you can no, no longer manifest the good right and so that's that's the problem with anarchy right like you're you you cannot have this this identity as a primary consideration like like you you can have objections against whatever political system whatever like that's fine but there is a necessity for the system right like and and you're going to have to have a level of participation with the system whether that's with the police or with a whether with the tax office right like you, you get to choose <laughs> you got you got to pick one and um right. And like I, I can tell you that like it's better to pay the tax office because like your identifying against is going up when you have to deal with the police. Right, right. And I think our natural again, just like, like our natural inability to live as an individual on our own by ourselves, unconnected from the world, is at odds with hierarchy. Right? Fair enough. So there's a conflict there. Right, we have to resolve that conflict in some fashion. We have to be able to say, you know what? I really just want to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it, where I want to do it. But if I do that, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. Maybe I can't. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I don't have enough strength. Maybe you know, I mean, you know, maybe it takes two people to do it, right, or more, right? And so then I have to, you know, call somebody up, right, or you know. Like, Poor, poor Ethan had to had to deal with me having the top down in the car, uh, and and I, I was I, I made a mistake, <laughs> right? Because I asked him, and then I, I forgot to put the top up, right? And and but he got a ride from the airport to Thunder Bay, right? And it's just like okay, Mark's Mark's a screw up, and he just screwed it up, and that happens, right? But but we have to be able to accept those conflicts to get what we want, because otherwise he's walking from from freaking Minneapolis airport to Thunder Bay, Canada. It'll take a while because it's you know a six and a half hour drive or something. So you know, I mean, he saves on gas, but you know, uh, it's a long walk, and you got to walk with all your stuff. Yeah, um, I just thought it was it was kind of funny when I got in there. It's like this bothers him absolutely zero because he has no hair at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I really like the uh, the identifying against as not a good thing. Because if you, you know, to do the Peterson triangle thing, when you're identifying, especially if you're, if, if you're looking at things from a non-dualistic perspective, which is the correct way to look at them, because there's no such thing as, as dualism. There's just, you've got, you've got a point of, um, you got a point up here and then you have it, it just goes in, it just keeps going down till it becomes nothing or pure potential. And if you're identifying against this, you become inverted it's parasitic and where like you're just pointing down to the ground until you become turn into nothing <laughs> where now if you have like a different point of identity you know and this point is in con not in frame here so if this point is in conflict with this point this identity i mean that's better um versus just identifying against you're just pointing down into nothing and you're not going to create anything. Nothing good is going to come out, out of it. So you're not pointed towards building anything. Yeah, right. Or, or, or well, you, you you can you can you can say, well, um, I I need I need to build a fence, right, for the neighbor, and and then I get some money so I can get my hit, or whatever, right? Like, so so you you can build, but but it, the building is in service of getting the money which is in service of of doing the thing that you want to do right? so, so there but but there's a, a fundamental thing right like you you can't be generative in the right way right like like that's the problem like there's always a perversion right like you, you can always say well like I, I i am a drunk right like i i i i am having a bad day 
and I, I still helped the old lady cross the sidewalk and I did a good thing, right? Because like you can do that, right? And, and people do that, right? Like, so I'm, I'm good for them because they shoot, right? But, but they're still stuck in that loop, right? Like they're still stuck in the loop of, of serving the alcohol. And and it's 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 important to, to get out of the loop, right? And, and wh whatever loop it is, right? Like there's 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 ways that, that you can get caught in, in walking in circles that, that's just not productive. And it's 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 hard for us to to identify uh, what that is, right? Because the reason that we do it is because we're we're serving something that we think is necessary, right? Like there's always this this component about I have to do this, right? Like for whatever justification you, you you're bringing up in yourself and and that's the thing that that keeps you in in the cycle so often the i have to do this is is associated with trauma right like if i don't get my my alcohol right i i'm gonna feel shit. i'm like i i can't sustain that state right like I, I i so therefore it's not an option to engage with that state and and the only way that you can get out is is to face that Right, like you have to face that part of yourself that 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 keeps putting you into into that state. Right, so if we're talking about anarchy, right, like like you're rebelling. Like why why are you rebelling against authority? Right, like wh what is what is this authority doing to you that 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 is that bad? Right, like okay, they're they're asking a lot of money from you from your income, right? But they're also providing you a place to get income, right? Like. And, and, and a means to get to your work and, and all of that stuff, right? And, and when when someone takes the income from you on the road, right, they're, they're going to try and catch the person, right? Or at least they should. So 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 that that stuff is all built in. And and it's like, yeah, like that's suboptimal, right? Like there's a lot of money going to waste, right? Like they're, they're not using your tax dollars in a way that they could, right? Or theoretically, because maybe they are using them in the way that they could because that's the limitations of, of working in large systems, right? Like that might actually be true. Like how much optimization can you still get out of this large system? Because like it's it's hard, right? Like like when I talk to people, like sometimes I'm, I'm surprised that, that things even work at all, right? So, so then like that there's this large system with, with all of these, these uh, separate things uh, moving individually but also together and like that that's a miracle that that even works right and and so yeah like there's there's a tyrannical aspect to that right but there's a tyrannical aspect to identifying against it as well right and and you're just like well i chose this tyranny and like i'm i'm not choosing this other tyranny which i i can't understand and can't control right but that's yeah, like where where's that grounded, right? Like, is is that is that what kind of insecurity are you are you chasing at that point? Yeah, and something that people don't, I I, I feel like there's this, we have this aversion towards authority. We think that uh, like for some reason, well, we there are reasons that we that we know of that we could get into, but we seem to confuse everyone seems to confuse authority with tyranny and they're not the same thing they're they're definitely not the same thing and they fail to understand that tyranny actually doesn't last that long if somebody is a tyrant like i mean you do want to avoid tyrants because you know that that really bad things can happen but they don't last that long like usually if a tyrant gets in power things usually correct themselves or the tyrant, the tyrant will go away. It's not like you're going to put a tyrant in, in power and just suffer under them forever. And like you need somebody in power. Well, yeah, the problem with tyranny is that people participate with it, right? So pe people identify against a spirit, right? Like a perceived spirit of the tyranny, right? Um, and when when that perceived spirit of oppression is big enough, then they're they're going to participate it and, and reinforce it, right? So, but yeah, like at, at that that is unsustainable. Like this this I don't know this 
philosophical experiment or something, or maybe it's actually a psychological experiment, right? Like when you have, have a group of people and they're cooperating and, and one group is voluntarily cooperating and the other group isn't, like the over the long run, the cooperative group is going to outperform the, the tyrannical group because there's energy that the system has being wasted uh, on on the imposition of of the tyranny, mm -hmm. right? So, so in energy terms, that is going to happen, right? But like we we should realize that the communist regime has manifested itself for many many years before it it uh, got, went away, and I I would argue that the Nazi regime, if they didn't make a bunch of decisions, also could have maintained itself for considerable duration right like they were planning for a thousand years and like i don't think they were idiots or, or, or fools or whatever so yeah like these these things are 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 iffy like and and, and you could make the argument like, oh, they're gonna always make the bad decision like maybe <laughs> but yeah um the thing is is that the fascism i don't i mean the speaking beyond myself but it seems to me that that was a lot more practical than than the communism uh, actually probably would have lasted a lot longer um because th that type of i mean uh, that type of uh governance had existed before um in history like the spartans did it for like 700 years right it's just anti-christian it's not it's not a christian way it's not a, a christian way of organizing society um yeah yeah i think i think i think it's important to realize and i i carl benjamin sargon of akkad did this first right? he said fascism is just honest socialism in other words it's the end of the road for all socialist schemes end in fascism and i think that's actually correct i think that you know i'm not a reductionist but things do reduce sometimes down to simpler forms mm -hmm. And you can't maintain any kind of socialism whatsoever without it devolving into fascism. It's not mm -hmm. possible. I think it's mathematically certain. I think if you model it, and, and people have, that's where it leads. I mean, ultimately, the state, which is the larger entity, should take priority in all cases over the individual if top-down power from above is true. Now, I don't believe top-down power from above is true. The Christians don't believe that either because that's not their ethos. And when you don't understand that, and it's nuanced, and it's hard, and not everybody can understand it, I'm sorry. That may include you. And it may include you with 110 IQ. I have no idea. I'm not making any claims. I'm saying not everybody understands the nuance that top-down power from above is bullshit. It's wrong. And that Christianity is not top-down power from above because we have freedom to aim at the good or aim at the bad. Right, roughly speaking, right? We can enact good, we can enact evil, and we can enact something that's you know fully neutral in the world, like right? just full of potential. Because the neutral position is also the position of potential. The potential could manifest good or bad, right? Over time, who knows, right? But that concept is difficult for people. So they squish everything down to top down power from above. And therefore, you have to do what the president says. No, you don't. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, and in the U.S., it's absolutely flat out wrong. Like the Congress sets the laws, not the damn president. Not that he doesn't do something mm -hmm. that you have to obey, but yeah. he doesn't set the laws. Yeah. Um, I'll just say this and let you guys get back to it. Um, it was somewhere in the Republic. Uh, Plato uses this example of a, as a ship captain, and he's you know he's he's conversing with uh, um, Glaucon and the other guy. And he asked, "Is is does the ship act, captain act purely for his own sake, or is he acting for something else?" It's like, well, if he was acting purely for his own sake, he wouldn't be a ship captain, because there wouldn't be a ship. So the the ship captain is submitting himself. I don't know. I can't remember the language, and of course, I don't speak Greek. But the ship captain is submitting himself to a. I'm going to use the word higher. Um, he's submitting himself to a higher identity. I mean, you don't have to say it's higher. You could just say he's submitting himself to a spirit that they all participate in. So if he's the final, if he's the last point of, um, if he's at the point of the triangle right here, that's a power from, uh, that's what you're saying, 
top down power. And that's not how it works because if he was there, the ship would cease to work. He's submitting himself to something. I, I, I use the word higher, a, a higher yeah, identity, a higher principality that everybody is participating in. It, and it he's has just to be fulfilled. higher because it's sub, which means under, right? So like, you're submitted. Like, when you're submitted, yeah. you're under something. Yeah, so I, I think higher. it's appropriate to language, you know, but. Um, no. Right, and, and I, th I think there's a distinction between submittance and surrender, right? So if, if you're submitting, but you're not surrendering authority, that means that, that you, you're, you're holding a different authority higher, right? So, so the, ship's, the ship's captain might be submitting, right? But like he might have a different authority or a different identity effectively, right? Besides being a ship captain, that might be higher or lower than his identity of a ship captain. Right. And I think when when you go to honor systems, right, what the honor system says is make the ship captain the highest identity. And and therefore all other identities that you have are submitted <laughs> or surrendered to to being a ship captain, right? And and that's why you go down with your ship, right? Like mm -hmm. that and but but there's a different system, right? Which is the well, the the Christian system and like I think all religious monotheistic systems that say no you have a different identity in relationship to god which is a higher identity right and then if if your identity as a ship kept comes into conflict with being a good person effectively right like now you don't do what the ship captain is requiring you to do but instead you're deferring to this higher authority and, and act according to that one right and you don't squish them you don't flatten them. You say no. There's a lower hierarchy and a higher hierarchy at at, at the top level, whatever whatever that is for you. Right, right. So if your ship was, um, yeah, there's. I mean, that's the underlying ethic that everyone subscribes to in a society that's Christian. It's like, okay, I'm a ship captain, but the moment that that the the ship comes into conflict with this this ethic that we all subscribe to, or like. Um, the ship is going to run over a bunch of innocent people or whatever. It's like, okay, stop, destroy, whatever. We'll, 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 um, uh, we'll, we'll cease being a, sh a ship because it's in com uh, conflict with this higher identity that we all subscribe to. Right. Um, That's that. The, the thing is, is like, uh, I don't know if you, it's like, what's going on with this whole leadership thing? And people are, it, it, like, people are so, they're they're so scared of of the leader blah 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 it's like we have to have a ship captain and like even if we have a bad ship captain if we're all orient orientated towards ship and and navigating a ship if we have a bad captain we're going to replace him with a better captain like that's like as long as we're all orientated towards the common goal and spirit that's why it's it's important when we're constructing or, or building this um this hierarchical structure that we're doing it we state our purpose and or, or we identify the spirit that we are all looking towards and right. the moment that someone is not uh justly fitting their role whether it's a person wherever it's at in the hierarchy that that will be replaced because like say you got a bad leader right. If that leader is submitted to the spirit of what it is we're trying to do, they'll they're going to have no problem stepping down and letting somebody more competent step step in. So right. we're not trying to build. You guys aren't trying to build a tyranny, and I think that that's what I think that's where some of the confusion comes in. Is we're so we have such an animosity towards authority and and leadership. We think that the leadership and authority are synonymous with tyranny, and people are trying to get. Like it's not the same thing. We have to submit ourselves all to the same common purpose or spirit, whatever we want to call it, and say, you know, if I become the leader, and for you know, I'll last like two minutes or whatever until we see another leader come along, and I'll have no problem submitting my or, or, or forfeiting my role to him because he's more competent and he serves the purpose better. So right, it, 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 right. Well, and well, where not, does it come from? It comes from the deep postmodern fear. Right, that the postmodern critique of World War II or communism is correct. Right, what was their critique? Well, a, I would argue it's not a critique; it's an observation. And they're all idiots. They're still idiots. They're still three years old. Like literally, actually, they're not smart people. They're just not. I'm sorry. They re write real pretty, like 
uh, but they ain't that bright at the end of the day. Their critique was, well, Hitler and Stalin had strong charismatic personalities and that's how they were able to take over. First of all, that's wrong. It's just a billion percent in every possible way, a complete mischaracterization of historical events. Full stop. Not that Hitler wasn't charismatic and not that Stalin wasn't charismatic, but that did not carry the day. What carried the day in Stalin's case was everybody knew that Stalin ran the hit squad and they were afraid to not put him in place of Lenin. Full stop. Fear. That's all it was. He ruled, ruled through fear. Okay. In Hitler's case, the chancellorship pre-existed Hitler. It was already there. Someone was going to get that position. And if they did well, you know, by saving Germany, and I, you, know, you could make some really strong and very good arguments that only Hitler could have done this. Fair enough. Like, maybe only Hitler could have saved Germany. I, I'm, I'm actually on board with that, that line of thinking. I think that's very likely that he was the only person capable of doing such a miraculous thing, because it was miraculous. Then, being appointed chancellor for life was a certainty. So the person didn't matter, okay? But the postmodern critique says it's top-down power from above, and the way leaders get power is charisma and narrative capture, roughly speaking. I have a video on narrative capture, right? Rewriting the narrative so that people believe that narrative. And that's why they critique Grand narrative. What's grand narrative? Grand narrative is your religion. The problem is, if, as, as I still maintain, religion is inevitable and non-optional, right? Like you will have a religion, whether you want one or not. Then when you remove the grand narrative, the religion, whatever, however you want to define that, the thing next in line becomes your new religion or grand narrative. And then when you remove that layer, a grand narrative, the thing under, right, it just keeps going. And, and I think that's the problem is people take the postmodern seriously. You should throw out all their garbage. It's all garbage, literally all of it. None of it is theirs. None of it is interesting. Their critiques are stupid and they're just dumb people who for some reason wrote books that are pretty, pretty sound, right? And confusing. And they're confusing because they're wrong. Like, oh, this is confusing. Maybe it's wrong. Not all the time, but maybe, right? And then if you take that seriously, you don't want leaders because power corrupts, because top-down power from above. Like all of these other tropes that the postmoderns talked about to justify the fact that communism doesn't work because it's a bad idea. It's that mm -hmm. simple. It's an idea that is flawed. But they want to defend it because they want to live in that utopia. So they're defending mm -hmm. their utopia. That's their religion, mm -hmm. by the way. My religion is yeah. perfect. Po political system, ideal political system. That's what their whole ethos was to protect that concept. And so top-down power from above, grand narrative, power corrupts, charisma is the thing that destroys our perfect um, um, uh, idealistic political system. Eh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. All of that is obviously, observably, completely incorrect, historically inaccurate, and absurd and mm -hmm. ridiculous. No, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and shame on anybody for believing any of it. But that's where all of this is coming from. All of it. And and I think there's this other thing, right, which is also wrong. Like all power comes from below, right? Like which is also not true. Like there's an also interaction right. between the top and the bottom, and 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 that there's a dialogue between between those two, which which <laughs> manifests everything, right? And and there's 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 a revolutionary nature to that, right? Like like even if you have a king, right? Like they, they die at a certain point, right? And then the order needs to be reset. And then you have democracy, which is like, well, we don't want to wait for the king to die. Like we're going to make it a little bit faster, right? But mm -hmm. but this idea of that, that there's only the, the, the thing coming from below is, is also mm -hmm. wrong. Like we- Yeah, because to... a, uh, a ship isn't, a ship needs a navigator. It doesn't. It doesn't get places by just a bunch of oarmen randomly oaring. They need a, a navigator or a captain at top that's guiding them on where to go. And the the the, the captain needs the oarmen to propel the ship. So there's there's, it's what we call love. 
there's this love between the top and the expression at the bottom and they work to, that's what creation is is these two things coming together the creation of the ship is you have the identity you have the the leader at the top and the expression at the bottom and the or, in the form of the, the oarsman and that what that is what creates a working ship it's it's that's what I think they call it platonic love. You don't even don't even have to call it that. You just call it love. <laughs> That's what love is. So, so I I, I want to add something because I want to bring it back to considerations. I want to be considerate of our, our topic. <laughs> and so, 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 why why is this leader important, right? Like, like it's it's doing the relevance realization for the ship, right? It's saying, well, you should be considering this. You should be considering that, and implicitly saying you shouldn't be considering all the other stuff and that's that's the most important function right like this is the function of cognition right and and if we're talking about collective cognition right like the role of the leader in collective cognition is to say there's relevant aspects to the world and there's irrelevant aspects to the world and if we relate to the relevant aspects of the world right like even if we're like not identical right because we're not right we will still start moving in the same direction right and you can imagine that well like there's there's several teams right and then one team runs into a boulder right but they're the, the front team right and everybody thought well we should we should be betting on that team to to manifest the right thing it's like well if, if we're at the boulder then then the, the next team which is going slower but at a path that doesn't have boulders on it Will, will manifest better in the world at a certain point in time, right? And 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 then we can assume that path and and, and then maybe split up again, right? So so, so like the the separateness between these 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 organs, effectively, right? Like they, they, they're manifesting different things in the world is is something of value, right? Like that's that's where the evolution can apply itself, of course, right? But but they need to be walking the same path right else else they're not a unity right and so when when we're talking about whatever right like this movement or whatever right like when when we're talking about a movement you have this perception of things walking towards the same thing right but when we're walking right we're walking in in a dimension right like so and it's it's really really hard to to see whether people are doing the same thing or whether they're not doing the same thing, right? right? And and my argument is we're not doing the same thing. We're actually being cross purposes in in many ways, right? And and we were talking about walking in circles, like like there's a lot of walking in circles, and the reason why that is happening is because there's no talons, right? And there's no head that sets the talons, right? Mm -hmm. Because there needs mm -hmm. to be a a relation between the different teams that allows them to maintain mm -hmm. a shared identity. Yeah, and I think I think look. Leadership is a skill. Not everyone can do it. In fact, almost no one can do it, actually. That's actually true. It can't be trained in all people. It can be trained in some people, for sure. You, there, there are plenty, there's always plenty of room for improvement in leadership, uh, almost no matter who you are, right? But what the leader does, and maybe only the leader can do, is set what you should be considering. And who should consider what? In other words, your role in the structure that you're cooperating in to bring about something bigger than yourself is set by the leader. It's not only set by the leader, but like the leader is supposed to maintain that and decide when it needs to change. And sometimes the leader is going to screw that up because people, as it turns out, are not perfect. Like it's still, mm -hmm. still true. Uh, still, I'm still sticking by that. I'm, that's a hill I'm willing to die on, right? And so you have to have some grace for the leader and you have to have some grace for the structure because that's not going to be perfect. And you have to have some grace for everybody in the structure, right? And you can't only have grace for the things that are not properly in the structure, victimized by the structure, uh, disadvantaged by the structure. If you're always focused on the margins, then there is no consideration for the aim. 
because it's one mm -hmm. or the other. Like something gets crushed under the wheels. Mm -hmm. That happens. It's going to happen. That's why I'm a pragmatist. Pragmatist, calculate casualties first. Okay, I know this isn't perfect because I'm not an idealist. Whatever it is is not going to be perfect. What's the least amount of damage I can do? And sometimes I get that horribly wrong, for sure. But the alternative is to do nothing. And that is actually the only alternative. Waiting for the yeah. magic emergence to just come out of nowhere and be good and do the right thing and manifest correctly is absurd and doesn't work. And, and also, when, when the structure grows, right, like, because we're talking about load, right, like, like, how much can we bear, right? And so when something grows, its capacity to bear things outside of itself will increase. And, and I think that's, that's the, the, the thing that people don't realize often enough, right? Like, like, when you grow, you can be more considerate of other things, right? Like, when you're not having to take care of your hunger, like, you can spend that energy in, in ways that, that are good. Uh, and so you first need to get to the place where you're not hungry. And, and that, yeah, that sucks, right? And, and, and there's people going to be left behind. But, but there's going to be people left behind either way. Like, and, and it's when we were talking about the identifying against, right? Like what, one of the consequences of identifying against is, is you're so focused on what you're identifying on that you don't see the things that you're leaving behind. Right? You don't see the potential that is not manifest. And, and it's, it's really easy to say, well, like it's just potential and like it's not guaranteed and therefore I, like it doesn't count the same way as the thing that's right in front of me, right? And, and to some extent that is true, right? Like you, you, you need to deal with the things that you have and that you can do and you, you can't always have a growth mindset. But, but in other ways, right? Like if you're doing that for too long, then you're going to be stuck at a place that you're stuck at forever. And that's also not okay. Right, right. But I, but I, I want to I wanna go back and emphasize, you, you know, the, the, the core issue, which is if you try to save everyone, everyone dies, right? And very much the problem of society right now is that we are trying to accommodate tiny, actual tiny, small and quantity numbers of people by disadvantaging everyone else, right? And so, you know, and, and, and that comes from the belief that the 1% is preying on the 99, which is a, a load of garbage. It's complete and utter nonsense. It's just false. It's as false as a thing can possibly get. Like, it is just wrong. You know, not that that doesn't ever happen, but it's not what's actually happening. Um, and And when we try to save 10% of the population, right, um, and, and give them the world that they want. We destroy the world that the 90% has been successfully living in. I don't think that's a good trade, especially not mm -hmm. if maybe those 10% can't be put in a world that's going to give them what they want because maybe 10% yeah. of the population is crazy and they want things that they can never possibly have or that if they had them would destroy them. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not making a claim. I'm just saying, have you considered that trying to ac accommodate a small number of people when a large number of people is quite comfortable might be detrimental to everyone and everyone might actually lose that game? Sounds like you're, you're uh, explaining a, uh, a worldwide pandemic over the, from the last two years. Or, 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 a, or a movement for rights of a certain group that's less than 10% of the population mm -hmm. or, yeah. or, 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 or a movement against 1% of the population. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I've probably said everything I've have that's worth saying. So it's, uh, I'll make room for someone else. Good luck guys. Yeah, thanks uh, for being on. Uh, people, there's a link in the description so you can hop in and join us. Also, we love to have questions in the comment section. Because, yeah, it's so nice to have Ethan. Ethan is a very deep thinker, contrary to his own uh, 
his own instincts. He's he's quite quite interesting, and he always has good stuff to say. So it's it's good to see him in the in the stream participating. But yeah, yeah, he, do, he does a lot of more. thinking for sure. <laughs> we does, get to yeah, share it. Sometimes it's a little too much thinking, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he knows he knows so much stuff. It's really good. And he read the Republic. Good for him. And he went through uh, my buddy Jack's uh, Ancient Greece declassified uh, 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 audio thingy there for uh, the podcast. Republic. Yeah. yeah, it's a podcast. That is correct. Is this actually Boom Shroom? Is he actually coming up? Yeah, sounds like it. No, you have I a, a webcam that you can put on and mute mute your audio before we we get destroyed by feedback. Feedback. Oh, there we go. Really comfortable. Oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. you, 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 you feedback. feedback. I got. There's feedback. Yeah, a yeah. bunch of noise or something. Echo. Echo. Oh. Yeah, well, you, you, you still owe me uh, a talk, dude. <laughs> yeah, anytime, man. I enjoyed that last one we did. That was a, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah, you, so you, you, you can watch our talk. I'll put it in the comment section. section. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I've never really uh, seen somebody kind of do that sort of format. Uh, it was cool. So, yeah, what did you want to bring in? Um, I don't know. I just saw you guys on live and hopped in here five minutes ago. Uh, what were you guys talking about? Well, we, well we're, talking we're talking about, about... Uh, being considerate and, and how that uh, relates to well, the bigger problems, right? So we were, we were talking about the problem of hierarchy and, and the problem of, of political systems and, and the fears that people have in, in relation to these things. I heard Mark talking a little bit about that, um, you know, the, the calculus, you know, you got to be really, you know, kind of cold and calculated with things. Otherwise, everybody's going to die. You know, um, you got to assume these people are going to get crushed under the wheel. How do you uh, mitigate that and make that as few people uh, as possible? Um, I don't know how, how deep you want to get go in talking about all that other lockdown stuff. Probably not a good idea, but, uh, but yeah, that, that I think the, the past two years has been a very interesting uh, psychological analysis on humanity. Mm. So, so, so you so you were talking about uh, being rebellious uh, before with me, and uh, may, maybe you have a real life example of of how people being considerate was actually manifesting something inconsiderate in your life, and, and yeah, how and you how deal you... with that. So, um, just everybody that had small businesses in my state, they uh, you know got shut down or they had a supply issue. They couldn't get things there on time. Um, there were a lot of mandates, just these arbitrary mandates. Um, you know, people weren't allowed to go out. So barber shops and stuff like that shut down. Um, I had a uh, computer repair shop. I couldn't get parts for months. Um, I had another friend that owned a racetrack um, nobody was coming out for the races anymore. You know, everybody was just kind of uh, locked down for two years. And uh, it took it after two years, it just took its toll on all these small businesses and it destroyed every one of us. You know, I lost my business. My friends lost their business. Um, we never got any kind of help. Like, you know, they were they were doling out this government money, this stimulus I didn't know of any small business um, that received a stimulus and I applied to all kinds of things. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. It was just a nightmare. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. I, I hope uh, I can set myself up in a position to where I'm not going to be torn apart like that. So that's been a struggle trying to figure that out. 
you know. Yeah, and I think I think you know what was the appeal of shutting down the businesses? Well, we have to be considerate of their customers. We have to be considerate of the global implications of a pandemic. We have to be considerate of the uh, of the elderly people, right? We have to be considerate, right? And so there's all these ways in, in all these ways in which we were manipulated by consideration of other people. And maybe in ways we shouldn't have because we were being forced to take responsibility for other people. And look, to some extent, yes, but that can be good, can be pushed too far. And that was, it's weaponized compassion, right? That was weaponized compassion. You, know, you have to have compassion for the elderly. You have to consider their, their point of view and the fact that they're going to be inconvenienced and, and, and they could die and, and all of this stuff irrespective of how many other people die, right? And again, this is that, what are you considering? Because if all you're considering is the margin, then you're excluding everything else and destroying the world for, 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 that, for that group. Yeah. Yeah, the core of it's the guilt, the guilt trips that, you know, everybody sends each other on. Uh, that, that's the primary steering wheel, if you will, of the whole shebang. Um, you, oh, you feel bad, Grandma. Oh, you know what about all these other people? Um, and it's just kind of steering people um, to behave this way and that way. There's several levers, but the guilt is really the main steering wheel, um, twisting people uh, all around. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. Think what, is, what is what is guilt? Right. Guilt is the movement of attention. What is consideration? That's the movement of attention. Why are you moving somebody else's attention? Do you have good intent when you're doing that? Are you doing it for the good? Are you moving somebody's attention to manipulate them? Because, you you know, th th there are other possibilities other than, well, I'm doing it for their own good. Are you? Or are you doing it for your own good? Because that's what I'm concerned with. Because, again, we don't know what we're up to. Peterson makes this very clear. You don't know what you're up to. You have no idea. That's probably true for most people to an extent that they don't appreciate. And, and that yeah. movement of attention through consideration is a big problem. And, and I, think, I think what this leads to is first order and second order effects, right? So if, if I do something in the here and now, it's really, oh, well, it's fairly easy <laughs> to see the de direct implications of, of my action. Right. So when when you're like, well, this happened and then this happened, the, the, the chain of causality is obvious to everybody. But like when when I do something and something happens next week, as a consequence of me doing something now, am I going to ever get credit for that? Like what what is the mechanism by, by which I know I did the right thing? Right. And so. Like there might there might be no way of of returning that credit to to that action, right? Like that there might be no way of, of of ever figuring this out, right? So so there's there's a problem there, and then well you you can see how that when when you're in an incentive structure, right? Like oh like I have to take, to take responsibility as a leader for my actions, right? Like like are you are you taking responsibility for the perceived implications right like oh like there's the statistics right like this is the hospital admissions right like that's a metric and everybody can judge me on that metric so i'm going to make policy on that metric or are you going to judge yourself by the second order, order effects right and, and and at that point you you have no ground to stand up upon because like this there's, there's no way that you can ever justify that in in a quantitative manner, right? Like, like the quantitative uh, measurement to, 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 to make that up is, is it's, it's always going to be contested, right? Like there's always more, right? Like, and then you can, you can say, well, like, okay, so what all, all the, all the second order effects manifest within the first year, but like, what about the 20 year, <laughs> right? Like that, like there's always more and more and more. And, and then we haven't even talked about, about the spirit. Right, like so, there's there's a spiritual component, right? Like the one of the objections towards wearing masks is that it has implications for the social interactions within society, 
right? Like, so there's a spiritual component that isn't even understandable in in in, in the way that that's going to reverberate into, into the future. The future. Right? Also. Yeah, because it. So if as we increase in population, there, there there's like all this disease. Now we have to wear masks permanently or something. Or social distance permanently, and then there's going to be this other thing stacked on top of us. Maybe we we have to wear sunglasses all the time for some reason because all of the cell phone screens are so bright we'll go blind. I don't know, but there's just going to be all this stuff added on to us where we're not even going to be like people that see each other anymore um, unless we figure out like what what do we do about this? You know, uh, what do you do about? disease what, what is effective what is the right thing to do that that's a really important point you made there what is the right thing to do there's not a central pillar anymore there's all these people that are like oh this is the right thing that's the right thing over there uh i don't know if it's always been like that it feels like there's more pull in all kinds of different directions more pillars that people are gathering, gathering around. They're like, Oh, my thing's right. Your thing's wrong. And, uh, and it seems just like crazy, like a crazy minefield of bullshit. Yeah, I think exactly right. It's the individualism and the, uh, sort of splintering of things through identification against, right. I'm not the person that takes the shot. You're the people that doesn't take the shot. That's an identification against, but because that doesn't define something in clear categories and it can't, then, right, everything splinters. And those people aren't the same people. And they're, they think they're the same people because they know they're not those people, right? But like the reasons, for example, why you wouldn't want to take a shot vary. And so saying everybody who doesn't take the shot is the same doesn't make any sense because it can't be true because there's lots of reasons for people not to take a shot, uh, any kind of shot, right? There's lots of the reasons to be against something like that, which is a, a, an action in the world with consequences. And there's very few reasons to be for something like that, of that nature, not everything, but something like that. And so, for example... You know, you can you can you can end up in a situation where you say, look, I'm against political power or I'm against political authority. Well, now you're an anarchist. Congratulations. Welcome to anarchy. OK, but how are you going to build something in the world? What are you for? Because you don't have a T loss. You don't have a purpose. You've just set yourself apart from something with a purpose. Right. And for the purpose of identifying yourself, but it cannot ever provide identity. Like me saying I'm an anarchist says nothing about me at all. It just doesn't give you any useful information in the world about my level of interaction, about what I care about, about what I think, right? It's, it's a single axis of identification that doesn't relate to anything that can be generative or participated with. Right. And so like the game A, game B craziness that, that Jordan Hall was pushing for a while and, and other people. Right. They just identify against game A. Like they're like, we don't know what the better solution is, but we know what we're doing now doesn't work. Thanks, genius. That's as unhelpful a statement as you could possibly make in the world. And, and we know there's a better way and we're just going to label it game B. What if there are seven better ways? Now what? What does that mean? Like, I, and this is why when you ask them, Game B sounds great. How do I participate? They never have an answer. They do not have an answer. They just say, well, you can't participate with Game A if you're going to participate with Game B. Oh, fantastic. That's so helpful. Yeah, I'll get right out. I'll get right on that right away. You didn't say anything. You didn't give me a useful frame at all. And right. that's and, the problem. And, and the problem is, right, like, if, if, if they're going to give a concrete answer, like, is is that game B or is that a concrete answer that's independent of game B, right? <laughs> it's like, like why why is putting it in the game A game B framing correct? Because um, because and and this right like we, we're talking about framing, right? And it's like okay, so what what is anarchy? Well, I want you to look at me 
in this way because I find these things important, right? Like that's what, what you're saying when you introduce yourself in whatever identity, right? Like, like this is important about me. And, and so w what does it say about you when what is important about you is a not something else? <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> who are you at that point? Like, what, what am I relating to? And, and so, yeah, I, I think I think it's it's really important, right, to 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 look at at this this reframing, and and and, and what 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 are we what are we uh, what are we pointing at, right? Because that that is when when we're in a frame, right? Like in some sense, that is the authority, <laughs> right? Like because it it determines what we see, right? Like it determines our collective participation, right? And so in some sense, changing the frame of the group, right, like of this conversation is is taking leadership. Like like it is it is literally the act of leadership, right? And so that that changing can manifest in, in, in different ways, right? Like either what my changing the frame is gonna conflict with you, right? And now we're we're, we're gonna have to resolve the conflict, or it's producing a pathway towards something else right like towards the manifestation that that we want to have as a group and and i i think it's really important that when we're having conversations right and, and i think this is related to to being in good faith right like when we're having in conversations we want to always invite the spirit that is allowing us to to manifest a new thing, right? And we we want to have clar clarity about the relevance, right? Like the, the the things that we need to attend to that are important. And and when when we're not in that, right? Like now we're we're effectively bouncing around individuals necessities right like oh i find this important right like i i, I find this, important. this important well well what you're talking about is what corporations are doing and corporations are you know doing all these different other things but you know that's a group of individuals trying to achieve a, a goal trying to do a bigger thing um yet when something that's not politically correct or something that doesn't line up with the mainstream or, the, or what the public eye deems acceptable. They all in unison change. They, they go, they go in that direction. And I wonder, you know, I know that we know there's, you know, manipulation on the television and, you know, uh, just all this rhetoric out there, but really how much of that is, is under someone's thumb, you know, ha, ha, you know, how much of that is, how much of that can you blame the corporations for? And then how much of that can you blame the individual for not having the willpower to ignore it? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Or is that confusing? Yeah, no, yeah, I know. <laughs> I think I think, I think, I think correct. Correct. Right? So you know, hold, hold on, hold on a sec. Let me finish. So yeah, I mean, I think that's correct. Like some things are inevitable, right? Like influence and and corruption. It's not going to zero. That's not going to happen. Okay. So the fact that it exists is not interesting or important. It is just a fact of the world. All right. You are not bringing it to zero. You're not getting perfect leaders. These things are not happening. And because those things are not happening, the question that you have to ask yourself is how much and, and when is it too far? And, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the question. Like, when is it too far? Well, that's hard to do. And so people would rather take it to zero. And, you know, so would I. But it's not going to be zero. So then the question is, is there a puppet master pulling the strings? Like, is there an actual conspiracy? 
And the answer usually is no. There's usually seven people with similar enough goals that the next step is something that they want you know, to, to enable. And usually that next step is something like crash the economy. Why would you want to crash the economy? Well, let's suppose you're an anarchist. Crashing the economy may, brings, bring, means bringing down the government. Now, I would, I would argue you're an idiot if you think that, but most people are idiots and they think that, right? Now, if you have hundreds of billions of dollars invested in a scheme that requires the destruction of retail shops because you want to put in a delivery model and take over the retail model where people go to stores, then you also want to crash the economy. Why else would you want to crash the economy? Well, let's suppose you think that free health care uh, should be paid for by the government forever for everyone. And you didn't get what you wanted last time. Okay, so you might want to crash the economy because healthcare is affected by the economy, right? Let's suppose instead that you have a dream that if you lived in the Weimar Republic and then into, you know, pre-World War II, that you would be the hero. And that requires crashing the economy. You want to crash the economy. Now, all of these people do not agree on the outcome, right? They don't agree on the ultimate outcome, but they all agree that the economy should crash. And they're all very hopeful that if the economy crashes, they'll get what they want. And so it's a confusion, right? So now it looks like there's one person trying to crash the economy. In fact, there's many groups trying to crash the economy for completely different reasons. And th those reasons are not compatible with one another. Like they do not mesh. And, and they may seem like they do, but, but they actually don't. And that's the problem is that, well, now it looks like a conspiracy because a thing happened. And maybe the reason why the thing happened was completely unintentional because maybe it turns out that when you try to make everybody stay home and in doing so, you make them you you force them into a situation where they don't buy as much stuff for whatever reason, then the whole economy goes down, right? And, but it doesn't go away. And the, the, the systems that rely on buying things no longer function correctly. And that causes a global supply chain issue that takes six to 12 months to manifest and then takes another year or two to work out, actually happens. And then that destroys your delivery business because it turns out you can't get the goods to deliver anymore and people get pissed off and they go to the store. Why? Because the store has inventory. They weren't counting on a just-in-time delivery system that's enabled by stores with inventory. In other words, the whole Amazon business model actually relies on the retail industry to be almost as big as it is and no smaller, or they can't do what they do because they're taking advantages of inefficiencies in the retail system. And so it's not an option for them to kill the retail system because they rely on it. They're parasitic upon it. And they don't know that. But all these things look like conspiracies when in fact, there, a lot of them are just second order effects from stupid decisions. Uh, yeah, I definitely think there was like a big push to corral people in a uh, in a desirable direction. Um, you know, mainly the destruction of small businesses and the inflation of bigger businesses. Because when a lot of people lost their their business, they had to go work for a big company. So that it just like transmuted that in favor of those people. Um, and maybe that'll change later. That, that would be great. Um, I don't know. It seems like a pretty big hit to all the people that I know. Um, this year though, I have seen some people around here that didn't have businesses start one because 
their last life got nuked by all this stuff and um they want to want to do something different so that's a good thing that's a silver lining i've seen too um but yeah uh i i just see a lot more people working um at home uh they're not uh out the the whole kind of everything has shifted i guess I'm waiting around for this next big thing to happen, whatever it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to be. Just the thing that's, you're not doing this right, or you're not doing that, and you you can't work, or, you know, you can't run your business. You, you have to shut your gym down. I don't know. Whatever it's going to be. Maybe it'll be another uh, disease thing, or maybe it'll be something totally different. But there's going to be something, because I think it went really well for uh for the people that wanted to go well <laughs> we'll see like it like i think there's there's always uh repercussions that or second order effects of of the imposition that, that people aren't realizing right like because because fool me once shame on you right but fool me twice <laughs> And I, I, I think I think we're at the fool me twice stage, and and, and a lot of people are are waking up, right? It's like, well, uh, yeah, there was there was this drama, but like, like is was the drama as as bad as <laughs> as we thought it was in the moment, and like, was it worth all the sacrifice? And, and people are gonna end up re reevaluating, and I actually, I actually saw, saw this saw, saw this new development in the netherlands where uh they're, they're thinking of of making an apology for uh the the actions of the dutch state during slavery or whatever like on on a bunch of points and then there was a lawsuit by the lobbyist for the apology to stop the apology <laughs> because they didn't think it went far enough and and it's even more funny because they, they 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 just got flat out denied and says like no no like <laughs> the legal system has <laughs> has no influence here because it's not an obligation of of the state to make this apology like there's nothing saying that the state has to do this right like it's a voluntary action but but the fact that they want to do the thing that they want to stop the thing that they're intending to have happen is is so amazing to me right like like the lack of gratitude with within that is is just insane like it's it's just insane and at that point right like from my perspective you're no longer a good actor like like you're not going to be grateful for the thing that you're getting while you're not like you you don't have right to it right like like this is what the judge literally said. Like, there's no reason for the state to do this, which is actually a reason maybe not to do it. But that's a different point, right? right. Like, this, like this. Yeah, nobody thinks of like slave drivers over in the Netherlands. Like, you know, I I didn't. I never thought that. <laughs> right, but but it turns out that actually most of the slaves <laughs> were. Oh, were it was like yeah. a hub, yeah. a slave hub, huh? Okay, <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, no, because they're the shipping. They were always shipping magnets. Greek, Greece, and and uh, and the Netherlands, the two big shipping empires. And Portugal, I think Portugal started it. Portugal was for a while. Yeah, well, look, Spain and Portugal started all the bad things. That's true. Uh, but but actually, most of the slaves uh, were transported on on Dutch Dutch ships. Um, I, I think I think that. That's that's pretty well established, but but the thing is that look, there's there's a way in which they're redirecting the consideration, right, towards redirecting the attention towards this one issue, and it's invalid because this one issue is wrapped up in a history that may or may not be portrayed accurately, and also, what do you do about past events? How do you take responsibility for something, something that you, that you, that you, you do? <clears throat> or present events? Because, you know, why should you apologize for slavery while there's still slavery going on everywhere? Um, like, let's fix that. Like, 
how about we all fucked up? All humans are really shitty to each other in the past. There's still some that are shitty now. They haven't got the memo that we're not doing that as a species anymore. We're trying to be cool. Um, we'll build you a water line and some like tents and show you how to farm or whatever we got to do. Everybody's trying to do the better thing here. Um, and there's some people that don't know that. And maybe we should help remind them in some way, shape or form. I don't know. We could all get behind that instead of the apology tour, like this useless apology tour that really, I mean, there's people dying out there, man. Child trafficking, you name it, blah, blah, blah. That, that's a problem we can tackle. It's not like an impossible thing. It's probably easier than going to the moon, right? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Well, that, that that is actually a good question. Is that easier than going to the moon? Because it might not be. <laughs> like, like we we were talking about having having these these large systems operate, and like at at some level, it's it's a miracle, right? Like, there there's a ton of incompetent, unmotivated people <laughs> that that are working in a structure. Uh, and like it still kind of does something. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because people love someone. You know, that's the whole reason any of this works. That somebody rolls out of bed in the morning and makes sure the power grid's working and your air conditioning's operating, the plumbing is flowing. Because uh, you know that they love somebody or they have a family that they love and they want to take care of. And now, as we know, with this meaning crisis that's in jeopardy people in the next 20 years aren't going to have that. So are we going to have lights and cars and stuff? I don't know, maybe on a limited scale. <laughs> well, you know, and also do they love just someone or do they love something? Like, do they have a higher ideal that they're enacting by getting up at 5 a.m. and making sure the water's flowing or getting up at four in the morning, working an overnight shift to make sure the electricity stays on? Like maybe they have a love of something higher than just the people in the family around them because maybe they're not staunch individualists, right? Maybe they understand they're embedded in something much bigger than themselves that's much more important than their discomfort at 3 a.m. when they have to take care of these things. Like that's, that's what, what I think. Yeah. We're giving up to a higher purpose, to a to higher, higher purpose. Yeah. That's a lot of love there, man. Yeah, that's a lot of love for people. And if you don't have that, yeah, we're, we don't have this conversation, the internet, all this other cool stuff that we got. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I got to hop off here. I just, I just saw you guys. I want to jump in. I see you on here again. I'll, I'll stop by, but thanks for having me on. Yeah. I'd love to, yeah, have, love you, to have you. Dude. Yep. See you guys. Have a good talk. So, so yeah, thanks yeah, for thanks. Participating, everybody else who wants to participate, uh, please hop in or participate through the chat with us. Um, and yeah, like there's 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 this thing, right? Like I'm 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 gonna connect this zero ca casualty delusion to to this idea of of measuring things, right? And like the the thing that we're judged upon is the measurement, right? Like that's that's the 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 thing that well that we can be held to account for because the rest is is ineffable and and yeah right so we're we're, we're gonna make the rules that that optimize uh, for the things that we can optimize for and and then there's there's also the buying off of 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 guilt or or responsibility with with just over over regulating things so that things can never be brought back to you right like like this is one of the problems i have with, with the legal system in in the us right like if you can sue everybody for everything and everybody needs to defend themselves against the possibility right like there's there's a lot of load that comes with that and right. in in the netherlands like they have something similar right but but they they don't have to protect themselves legally but now they have to protect themselves against the insurance companies right because they have to yeah. justify why they're doing the things they do in the way that they're doing them it's like well like why is the insurance company deciding what a doctor is doing and whether that's correct or not? right right well and 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 the biggest problem with the zero casualty delusion is that what you're doing by 
trying to optimize to zero or for zero is you are not optimizing because that's not optimization, right? That's cutting things off, right? That zero is is a, a weird a weird number, right? A strange number, as Peterson says, and you are giving up or you know relinquishing your responsibility to discern, right? You're 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 saying, I don't want to make a decision between the 80% and the 20%. I don't want to make a decision between harming, you know, 1% of the people and harming 99% of the people. I'd rather not do that. And that's what you're doing. You're trying to avoid discernment, trying to avoid judgment. You're trying to avoid making a decision. That's why, to loop it back to tolerance, tolerance is dangerous, right? Because if you're just too tolerant, you're just avoiding making a decision. You're being a lazy irresponsible person and like look fair enough we all get lazy and irresponsible but when that's your ethos when you're just trying to avoid personal responsibility when trying to avoid harm right all you do is stagnate yourself into inaction and when you're trying to get people to act in the world in a way that can't cause harm to other people you are paralyzing them right or setting them up for failure and I don't like either of those options, right? And you're still cutting them off from grace and redemption, right? All of those problems are still there. So this claim, this guilt claim of being inconsiderate is a cudgel that you use against your enemies to avoid your own responsibility for being a decent human being, all right? And again, like, are you giving the same consideration to the to the alleged perpetrator as you are to the victim? And are you sure you're right about what happened? Right? The number of times I get people saying, you were mean to that person. Uh, and I ask them and they're like, no, I didn't think you were mean at all. That was your judgment, not theirs in the moment, right? Like that, in other words, the thing you think happened didn't happen. Worth considering. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what your, uh, you know, what your ethos is, and and why you, you know, have that, ha have that desire to use that cudgel. But it is a cudgel. So I I listened to this uh, <laughs> this podcast from Tom Holland called The Maid of Holland, and he he was talking about uh, <laughs> the Dutch ethos and and how we were uh, effectively we're we're trying to reclaim land from the water right which is literally a biblical thing right like take making order out of chaos and then there was this this, this thing about city walls right like so that there's this walling thing and then there was this protestant movement that was trying to wall itself off from the catholic imposition manifested through the spaniards that were taking over over the netherlands and so so he was he was going through all of this right and 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 what what is it well like we we can have this skin right like we can have this garment of skin that protects us right and, and he he eventually and and you should listen to this podcast because it's it's full of symbolism and it's awesome but he eventually came into well we're, we're trying to organize the house that we're living in neatly and and the, the role of the dutch maid is in some sense she's she's protecting the house from entropy which was something ridiculous during that time because like like why would you clean the the streets in front of your house right like why would you why would you take responsibility for for, for that that stuff and and the point was that that is how you gain purity right like that's how you keep yourself pure in, in the eyes of god right and so there, there, there was there was a, a a measurement of of defense, but 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 the defense was was manifested in in the spiritual, right? Like in it, it is in in keeping the right house, you have the right ground for being the right person, right? Like your your personality uh, evolves in, in as a consequence of what you're manifesting in the world, and. and Paul van der Klee is going to love this, right? Because this is all based on, on Calvinist <laughs> theology, right? And 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 yeah, there, there's there's this element in in this purity that 
that is uh, yeah like it it is it is taken to the material and and he was also making this this distinction right like so 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 during that time which which was the introduction of the golden age in the netherlands right you you get you get this focus to material gains and material manifestations that that is hyper in 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 a in a real way right like like it, there was there were things possible that weren't possible before right and so there was a, a temptation connected to to that option and 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 yeah right like you, you you need to resist that temptation but but you can't ignore it right because there's a whole bunch of potential in there right so, so like that that is navigating well like in in some sense and, and like we're gonna we're gonna have to connect this back to affluence right because i think i think affluence is the thing that allows you to be considerate like it is actually the, that which allows you to to do other things and we've we're taking this for granted like like we're taking this for granted that we can like just get everybody on board of the art right like no noah didn't take everybody on board of on the of the art right like, he only took his family <laughs> and if he was considerate of, of all the rest of the people like like yeah that that did not happen right and and yeah so that that's a hard question to ask yourself and and that's a hard problem to solve yeah yeah and that's where we we fail with consideration it's like where does it begin and end <laughs> I, that's the relevance realization again what 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 is the proper level of engagement with consideration as such? What is the way in which we should be uh, considerate of others? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting. Like I, I just listened in. Uh, I'm from Denmark, by the way. 22 year old. Uh, just found you guys stream randomly. I tend to go on YouTube, just search up stream yards and see who's live sometimes from board, but. Uh, Hope you guys have a good Friday and uh, seems very, very interesting. Yeah, do you have, do you have a question? Like, uh, like hello, I just love love to be uh, maybe a part of the discussion. I'm a Christian man myself, and uh, you know, a young uh, believer, I will say, and uh, just would like to hear your opinion how how you believe and and what, what, what we um, all can learn from each other. Like, I'm a I'm a learner and a believer. You know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. Well, well, wh what we believe in is is doing this, right? Like getting out the message to to have people uh, change the, okay. the way that they're understanding things, because uh, of course like that's okay. that's the first step, right? Like if, if I think the first step is to learn yourself before you teach others, because like you know when I what I mean, like when I go to school, I hated that shit because my teacher. She just had the arc and she had to get to the same, all of the same class, all the same classmates. And we all had to do the same thing. And she didn't, she already knew the answer. So she was not really learning anything. You know, if you want to say to your kid, don't sit on your phone all day, you probably have to do the same as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really get it. But like, uh, I just hope we guys can like, you, you guys learn yourself before you teach other because I'm not saying you're hating or anything because hate, sp hate spreading very, uh, very fast, you know, uh, hate sp uh, speech and all that and all that. And, and you're just trying to do good. But I'm also saying good things can also turn bad. So never put uh, whatever other uh, uh, beliefs or, or, or whatever like uh, on other people, uh, if you haven't learned yourself, I, I respect all religions and I love all people. I try to, to understand, you know, it's again, um, understanding is a misunderstanding. Basically, if there's something you don't like, it's or if it's something you don't understand, it's very easy to say, I like, I don't like. No, it's very easy to say, I hate instead of saying, I like or I don't like. But if you if you don't hate and actually try to understand, you will say, I like it or maybe I don't like it. And that's fine. That's all I'm gonna say like that. But, so, so do you have yeah. an experience with with consideration and how that can be inconsiderate? Because that's the struggle that we're we're trying to dance around. Mm -hmm. I think it's really about um, it's again uh, like 
like you know we can all be angry we can all be mad and i don't like to look at the world black and white that's what i mean like and 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 we should all be teachers we should all be uh, students mm -hmm. you know under god um but like it's very uh i don't know like what to say there actually but like Maybe I'm missing it a little bit, but like, yeah. Well, well, so so what we're trying to figure out, right, is 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 this idea of consideration. And <laughs> it's trying to in, figure something out, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds very right. deep questions, and it's a deep question to figure out. Like, I don't think I could figure that out. Like, I would love to well, see yeah. my, my beliefs. But part my, of my part of figuring out is, is is looking at something long enough, right? Like, if you look at something long enough, you'll find you, it. Well, it's like following the white web. You don't necessarily have to find it, but, but you'll yeah. find a way to relate to it, right? Okay. You'll find okay. you find a way that's like, oh yes, that's that's how I deal with it, right? And and, uh -huh, and then you uh -huh. don't really know it, but you know enough to 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 have a, a good relation to it, right? Like mm -hmm, that that, mm -hmm. that that you're not misusing it. And, okay. and I, I, I think that's what we're trying to do with, with this consideration, right? Because because we're identifying that this being considerate is is being misused, right? Like it, it's it's being misapplied in 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 in, in life, right? Because okay. initially the first thing that comes up when you say, Well, oh yeah, I'm I'm being considerate of you, right? Like that seems like a good, right? Like like being considerate is a good. But there's there's ways in which that being considerate is actually doing the opposite in some sense, right? Like it's it's drawing uh -huh. away the attention from the good, and and it's it's actually more a, a manifestation um, of of it's like energy. I would say like I think it's all coming to energy. If if that's what you want me to answer, because it's all energy, you know. I can give you bad vibes. You can give me good vibes. You know what I mean. But it's not gonna go both ways always. Um, and that's something I think was really, really uh, interesting, like energy, human energy, because we share so much energy and we take so much energy, but but we don't really seem to understand how much damage we're doing to this with all this internet, with these computers, uh, you know, like they do microwaves to your brain all the time. Mm -hmm. so it's like putting you your, your brain in a microwave. And, because I'm young and uh, I'm born into it, you know, I didn't choose this. I would have want to just get my own farm, my own family, my own food and water and so on, and just live the simple, easy life, hard life, but still life is simple. You, you if don't you actually you want to do that? I, I don't know. I haven't uh, tried it, to be quite honest, but it's my dream. But why why so, haven't you tried it? uh it's cold in denmark so, like there's no homeless <laughs> over here so it's just, just start up a whole year project like actually buying a land and, and starting up building or maybe a, a old farm or it's well, denmark you, is don't, small, you don't have to own the land cold, you can just flat and someone else that is small but like yeah i don't want to do that i've always been independent i know oh no nah, actually i never worked for anybody I, i've been why, uh, why not you don't think there's good people to work for Absolutely, absolutely. And I work for my family and my friends and so on. But I, you mean what I mean? Or you know what I mean? Like um, working for a company or just doing some Yeah, some but when you were talking about a farm, for... right? <coughs> yeah. Like yeah. independence, being more independent. And that's something you have to build up day from day to learn. Well, like, why do you want to be independent? To, to be free basically Home? to do free whatever i want for free from the system from the government from the whatever they want to push on my neck you know what i mean what, what is christian about that what is christian about what that about being independent I, I don't talk about religion really about that like i think we're all free or we should be free to believe and to live as we we want uh what we feel safe and, and good with for our family and ourselves but 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 like you can be happy, uh, go go in the bank and win ten million to a house, and then you have to pay that back in the next ten years. But instead, I, I go and build my own house in one year, and I can have fun the next nine years with that. You know what I mean? Like it's just like you can make things more simple, more easy. Life is pretty simple. But if you wanna go to whatever, and you have to kind of like if you born like i'm saying like i'm born into this system i have things to pay and do and so on 
but I wish I was just like free to, to make my own food and I didn't have rules about like how much I could make and how but much. Why are you free to do all that? Like people do that. You all are, the you are but not like, really because like you can't, you can't just go out of the, the system. You still have to work for them. You have to oh, people have do to it all the time. You, yeah, you, know, you, have, you absolutely can. People do it all the time. You should join. Of course. Them. And, and yeah, I should, I should. And, and again, you should join yourself. Like you can't just join a club and say, oh, now I'm going to be independent and I'm going to learn all about oh, yeah, that. Like that's actually, something that yeah. takes day like, from day, you know? Exist. Like those clubs got, actually exist. Yeah, but of course, but, but I don't think that's a good, good if, thing if because we're different. If you can, course. like if it's not an option, it's not an option. But you, yeah. you can, you okay. should do that, right? You I wouldn't should, have internet, you wouldn't have a computer because you can't build that by yourself. But you know, if, if you're if that's if you're privileging being free from the government and all this, then you should go that that way. There's nothing. And, and again, that sounds pretty uh, boxed, but like, yeah, it, yeah, you're right, and 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 it's it it is again uh, my choice. It's 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 me who have to choose what I want to do with my life, where I want to go, and so on. What my goals is. Why now? I really just want to explore. I want to try to get experience and share experience. I'm a YouTuber myself, where I go around in Denmark. The live stream outside in real life and uh, just share and get experience but when i when i'm actually getting older like when i actually get my own family and so on i will wish for my my kids to not be in the same as me like being playing video games all day or being on the internet so on. like you know what i mean like the basic things today but i really but want my why why don't okay. you stop the things that you think are bad because I, I, I'm not doing it the same. Yeah, yeah, no, I get what you mean. I'm not doing that. Why yeah, now? but then why are you complaining about the things that you can I'm not do? complaining. I'm just I'm just telling you where my goals are. Okay. That's not complaining, but Okay, why why aren't you working towards your goals? I I am, I am. Every day. I'm learning to make my own soup. I'm uh, growing. I'm uh, I go to uh, I'm my own garden where I grow. Uh, a lot of vegetables. It's very cold right now in Denmark. It's like snowy, like this much snow. Terrible, but uh, I have plants inside. You can see them. I know that lemon tree and I have a olive tree. Over there. I got many plants. I have a, in my garden, I have like 20 big olive trees, uh, 10 years old. I've been growing a long time and I've been in gardening school uh, a lot in a border school. Uh, five months ago, I was on a border school where we had a lot of gardening classes too and so on but i really have an interest in in uh, in, in mother earth in earth actually living earth i love uh, working with that and i'd love to grow my own food because you can do everything yourself like i'm telling you in your own way of course um and of course we can't leave the system and it's really nice to know there's a backup like a hospital you can go to if you go like out in the woods like a, a caveman and live there <laughs> i guess not really safe but you know what I mean? Like, I just want to be more independent. And I think we're going the, the, the opposite way most people. What, what yeah. is the reason that you want to be independent? Because I feel sick. I've been uh, feeling sick in a long, long time. Uh, as a young man, I, I haven't, I haven't uh, of course, taken the best choices, but still, uh, I feel it's a very unhealthy uh, way of living this way. We, I'm living, in, at least in Denmark, and my friends and so on. Like, People can buy alcohol when they're 16. I'm alcoholic now. I drink every day. I smoke weed every day. I even do drugs sometimes and shit. Like I'm that's not me, you know, but it's it's again um it's a big escape, you know. It's a big chaos in my life, but it's something I wanna fix, of course, and something I'm trying to fix every day and work on. But it's only myself who can help myself. Of but, course, but these tools. What but. what is what is the problem? Is is the things the, that you do in the system the problem or the system? I just don't uh, feel good with like so I really want to be independent, like make my own things, my own food, my own closet, my own house, my everything, you know, and uh, get my own land. But but like it's not possible here, and and it's something you have to build up to be independent. Like first of all, you have to of course have a sum of money to actually say to the system i'm going on pension now <laughs> and you can screw me <laughs> and i will live on this and this money every month you know it's a pension like you can do that like in denmark i think it's like you need maybe six million uh crowns that's around one million dollar and then you can go on pension 
of course you can just do whatever you want and yeah if you go uh, and of course you don't get paid a lot and you can't use a lot that's where you don't want to go you know like make your own things and so on uh, i don't know like is it totally crazy what i'm saying or if i'm new for you or like what do you guys no, I've, I've heard this story many times before like it's okay okay fair enough fair enough but yeah, uh, it's again maybe of, yeah. it's a struggle of trade-offs right there are a bunch of trade-offs you can go build your own house you can't have internet you can't have electricity you can't have a hospital but you can build your own house right but but you're trading off a bunch of stuff and yeah you don't want the trade-off well, i don't blame you it sounds like a bad deal so a so trade-off is inevitable right okay you think that but that's no, I, a bit, I, I that's, it depends on what kind of house you want. Like I can build my own house with old uh, shit, and of course that's not gonna hold the yeah, next storm. Then, you, then you'll have but, a but shitty like, house. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, that's but again, I, so you're, that's you're not, not. But I'm just saying, I don't want to manage. I would better go build my own house in one year for the money I actually saved up for, than go to the bank and say I want a house and a stupid car and a stupid dog and some stupid kids, so I can feel happy for that little period of time. And it's not gonna work out, then I have to work a lot. I'll better just work for myself and, and, and build my own uh, house, you know what I mean? I don't know why you're not doing that. Like you could do that. You just have to give up being online and yeah. drinking and all this other stuff. Absolutely, right? absolutely, absolutely. And you're totally right. I'm not like telling you. That sounds uh, good. Like you should go um, do that. Like, yeah, yeah, I should, I should. And, and I'm going there, but like, it's uh yeah it's, it's again my own problem and it's myself who's standing in front of there you know like in front of myself i'm the wall but uh I mean, so you guys have really like fucking einstein's like holy moly and your ball also is are you almost bald, but, <laughs> but, but for real you guys are really smart like i really respect you but but i feel there's a little bit of like we don't know each other but you seem a little bit like Judgmental, maybe I don't know. You're not pointing fingers. I like that. No, but, like, 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 but uh, like we're we're trying to help you figure I out. I am a, you want, no, right? no, like I will and, respect and, that. So if if you're saying something and you're not doing it right, like there's a problem there, right? Like either you what you're so? saying is incorrect or what you're doing is incorrect. Okay. And you need to fix okay. one of those. That's interesting because maybe I go on, I just go on telling myself uh, things and yeah, you, like you say, nothing happened, but. That's not really the thing. Like I really uh, like you. You don't know me. Like I just got my own apartment two months ago. Uh, got from my mom's fucking almost basement or mom's room, and I feel something is happening and so on, you know. But uh, I still feel lost in a way, and I, I mm. need that direction so to go. I need a. A more goal of course these are big goals like getting your own place getting your own family i know that's in the long future but um but why yeah, not I, like I, really I think, uh, I think you should have to think figure out better things of course like school and, and work and yeah i think you, i think happy. you should take small i'm not goals, happy right yeah, like yeah, like yeah. when when you do small goals right you you actually get the satisfaction of reaching your school. goals right yeah, like and yeah. that's really important right but it it you also learn right you you learn okay. by doing right like I, of I, I was i was i was gonna suggest at the start since you were suggesting well i want to i don't want to work on a farm you you can just work on a biological farm or something True. right like like yeah, there's plenty could, of I places could. where where they'd be happy to have you like they there's have farming have schools and all that i know i know that you're totally right man and and but farming in denmark and actually being having your own but you don't have to do it in denmark sake, it's different because all farming in Denmark, it's it's not like big in America where we have millions of cows in one farm, but we still have like they're in cages, you know, and yeah, the same there's, for there's all other animals. Farms as well. It's not what I want. I no, want like uh, other farms as well. There's farms that do it correctly, and if Denmark is actually as horrible as you say, you just come over here and I didn't say it was horrible, there's but definitely yeah, farms here that, yeah. that do it correctly. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what are you guys? What are you guys said, by the way? I'm in the Netherlands, and and I know that oh, there's shit. definitely farmers yeah, here that that aren't doing the but things that's the same. that farmers do. It's the same over here, but you know what I mean. Like it's all uh, they make it like it's not like there's maybe two persons in Denmark who still live in on the old farming ways, where they have no machines, just horses and cows and so on and so on. They don't live that way. They have to make money. 
Oh, go work for Very them. Very few people do it for themselves. And go they're very poor, but they can still live. Go work live. for them. Like but work for who? Real cool they, they, can't, they can't hire me. They can't hire me. And I want my own farm. I want my own family. Why should I? Of you course I should. Like, I'm young, but you gotta, I know what you mean. Yeah, but like, you got to start small. You can't, right? First, you work for somebody so that you figure true. out how to run a farm, right? True. And then you get true. more jobs. True. That's a good idea, at least, if you want to want to learn some tricks, uh, tricks, yeah, two, two. Love it too. And, and you've, you're both from Netherlands? Or what about No, you? I'm from I'm from the United States. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Well, can, can I ask what state or like South? South West Carolina. Or, South Carolina. Uh, yeah. It's like the Chile. It's the only thing that pops to my head when you say that. The Chile. <laughs> South Carolina. It seems very hot. It, is it, it warm over there is. or? It's winter right now. It's a little. It's a little cooler than I'd like, but normally it's quite. Cool. Cool. We have like that much snow outside. It's terrible every time. <laughs> no no snow here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we've so, got farms. Yeah. So, when 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 we're talking about this these big decisions, right? Like working somewhere, right? Like you you, you don't have to go for a whole year, right? You can just try out for a week or, or a month, right? Like you, just, sure. you can just call them on the phone. Experience is better than no experience. Like it's better to try to things out. Like that's really what you've got to do uh, most of the time. Right. And, and I bet they'd be happy to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm my problems, you know, and it's my own problems. And I can only fix them. Like I have my addictions and shit. That makes me not available to work when you drink all day and smoke. Yeah. And all that well, maybe so, maybe that's what that's what structures and societies can help you with too, right? Is you know, of course, maybe, of course. Maybe uh, not living on of, your own is better if you're an addict because if you're an addict, you'll just. I go to uh, I go to counseling meetings uh, with a woman just one to one every week, uh, and I was there for the. I was there for 15 times, but I didn't do the homework she gave me, to be honest. And uh, last mm -hmm. time I was there, she told me we had to stop it. And mm -hmm. uh, I had to call her after New Year, she told me. But yeah, and since that, it's been going really bad. I did cocaine almost every day. I just stopped like three days ago or something and thought about it today, also buying some more when I'm really broke and it's terrible. I'm just alone, you know, like I just come from my mom's place. My brother is in jail, so I took over his apartment. <laughs> to be quite honest, yeah. It's, didn't it's didn't you open up with that you're a Christian? Yeah, I am. I am. Like, That's are my... you going to church? I, I don't. Uh, not that often. I, I, of course, do to some uh, extent, but I don't go there any, every Sunday. I think, I think believe is something you should do for yourself if you want to share or you want to listen um, to a priest or, or whatever. Uh, I, what what do they call called in other religions? I don't even know. Like, but but like um, that's something you should only do for yourself in the star. Like that's your belief. That's something you should die for because that's what they want to take away from you. You know, and that's your freedom to believe. And I think mm -hmm. everybody should believe. If I ask other so, people in my age today, what do you believe in? They say I believe in nothing. I say what is nothing? What is nothing? <laughs> you cannot explain me that either. It doesn't have to be a God, it doesn't have to be Jesus or Allah or Muhammad, whatever, or Buddha. It's up to you. It's it's about you believing in yourself and your family and whatever else uh, over you. There's so, always so something over you. But yeah. do, do you think that in the church there's, there's a bunch of people trying to be good? And they, uh, they struggled. Well, let, let me finish. And, and they struggle with similar issues like, like you and... and they have experience with that and that they actually could be there for you in a way that the therapist cannot the church yeah of course in some churches i would say the problem with danish churches is this should be public to everybody okay no no no, no no i'm, I'm no, almost no, no, every no, no, okay, okay, no, okay. No, I, i'm asking you a question right okay sorry sorry if, sorry. if you think they could be there for you right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. why don't you make use of them why don't I? I um I do actually. I thought about it at least, and I actually did talk to priests uh, like many, oh, not, not that long time ago, maybe six years ago. Uh, and again, like I, I just don't um 
I think this is different from a priest that and 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 my dad. I think it would be better to go to my family than a priest. Listen, priests in Denmark, these they are signing up doing the uh, the the holy uh, whatever you know um, to, to yeah. say I am uh, I'm gonna uh, work for the on, church hold and hold the people. No, listen, you have to. Yeah, have I know. To I, 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 I know what you. And they don't. Say. They don't. Right. They fucking lie, and and they go and do satanic oh. rituals with the Freemasons. I, rituals I agree outside that of there's the, some individuals, uh, public. like there's some Disgusting. individuals yeah. that might be doing that, right? Yes, yes. But there's also individuals that aren't doing that and are actually true. Hiding. And but so they are all sold. You, they all get a paycheck. I don't believe in paychecks, man. When you when you get your first yeah, but, paycheck, like, your mind me, will only me, be in the. Let paycheck. me finish the point. Sorry. So, if you want help, right? Yes. I'm yes. Like, help. I'm no, I, I have to help myself. No, <laughs> even I can choose. I can put this out in my beer, and I can not drink the beer, and I can have to smoke my joint. You know what I mean? I can throw all my money out of the window. No money for coke also. Fuck can, it, you know. Can can you can you let me finish? Sorry. Yes, of course. Okay. So, even the people right who get paid right like can do good things like getting paid doesn't make you do bad things right true true and you don't have to talk to priests right like there's also people in churches that's right? why i'm here like, to talk to you guys right and 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 i'm i'm trying to say that there's people like me in the real world right that mm -hmm. you can yeah. get into contact with okay and like i i want to help you right like we're on discord we're doing meditation every day we're, we're, we're having Wait. talks every day. We're trying to do this stuff online. So like subscribe to the channel, everything, right? Like come on to the Discord. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a link. But there's an important aspect, right? Like I cannot knock on your door and check in how you do it, right? So if you, if you go on a Coke band or whatever, like I cannot support you. Like that's not an option for me. Well, what do you mean? Like if I'm, what, what do you mean? Well, if, if 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 you're if you're off, right? Like, whatever, right? Because because you 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 lost your your discipline, right? Like you. you no, know. no, of course I, I respect your uh, stream and your house or Discord server, no, 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 whatever, no, no, no. and your walls, of course. No, no, that's not that's not okay, what I'm okay, doing, right? Like, okay, okay. In in life, right? Like, yeah, you yeah. you're talking about self control and dealing with addiction, right? And and mm -hmm. when when you're an addict, right? Like this. There's times when things go better, and then there's times when things go worse, right? That's life. We all are addicted, right? Guess, to some extent. Yeah. Well, so in some ways, yes. No, we have patterns. We can change patterns. We can have remove patterns. We all eat, sleep, and so on, so on. Okay. Right. Yeah. But but it's important, right? Like when we can't do the right thing, when we have uh -huh. people around us that help us do the right thing, right? Yes, and they yes, can be yes. physically be there with us to help us through things right like that's really important and, okay and so what what is important for you is to find these people in yeah. in your life right okay oh, okay and 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 listen to them right because of like, course i'm a really good listener well, i know yes, you don't feel that right until, now until but... the moment that you're not because you're you're whatever you're you're not feeling well right and then you're not a good listener and okay. everybody has that as well, right? And so, I guess what 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 needs to happen, right? Like you're talking about all of these patterns, right? Like there's these negative patterns that build up. And I don't and believe in negative and minus and plus and black and white. I no, think we there, all there, uh, born there, under the same star. There are patterns, right? Like going to school that allow you to to go. That's the school your... making that system, no, 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 listen, not me. Let me finish. That's not my system. You know what I mean? Listen. listen. There is yeah. a pattern, right? Like learning, yeah. right? Like I'll, I'll just leave it out of school. It's just my learning. name, my classroom, A, B, C, and one, two, three. Right? Yeah. When you learn, it allows you to go towards your goal, okay. right? Okay. Because you okay. need to learn certain things in order to get your farm, right? Okay. Like that's just necessary. Okay. So learning is a good pattern, right? Absolutely. It, so if you are among people right who have good patterns you will be able to do more good patterns because you'll cooperate with them yeah yeah and that's what you need you need you need to be among okay. people so what you're saying is like 
I'm a loser, so I should stop being with losers because that makes me a bigger loser. I should start being with rich people so I can become rich. Nah, but no, I heard no, that a lot. And I, I yeah, no, like, no, but no, listen, rich people. To, good to people. say, to say, good fat people. kids play best with fat kids or whatever, you know, like that's a, that's a school. I think we are, we can all learn from each other and everybody have a, a word, everybody have a, a meaning, everybody have a belief. Yes, everybody has everything, but and a does, does, does the thing yeah. allow you to get out of the situation that you don't like or not? At times it does, but at times it, not in the long one maybe, but that's again my choice, yeah. brother. not somebody else. And I shouldn't find out well, if, like if, this. If I should find is, I don't love, help, I should find that, friendship that is fine. and so on, of course, yes. But, but I don't need... Uh, um, a psychology like or something right now maybe i do but like you know what i mean like you can't you're not a doctor either so you or like whatever so you can't tell me i need to find better people because you don't know who i know you don't know the people i know i don't know you either I, yeah, you, you you seem very, like find better people like, yeah but you seem very just some like you're pointing a lot of fingers at me bro and it all points back to you like it seems there's something wrong with your head a little bit Okay, that sounds retarded, but like, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but like, uh, <laughs> I, I, but like for real, no, I, it just it just seemed like you want to get independent. Trying to and distract I'll... from facing the thing that's obvious. Okay, that's what I think is happening. That is not true, maybe, because your wife and I want to see straight sometimes, and it's hard, you know. Uh, it can all be illusions at times. It can all be looking. Uh, weird and then the next or oh, good like my dreams can be your nightmare and that's also the thing I have to understand my energy is the whole number than yours yeah so just just stop talking about me Manuel oh, I, I yeah. will stop talking about you we, we talk about I, us we I, let I, Mark I, talk for I one just, time <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm getting to too with hard I'm sorry yeah but I, I will respect you guys. Get this message, yeah. right? And and you yeah. think about it, right? Like yes, I will. And and you you I you have a responsibility towards yourself to. I do, absolutely. Do the best absolutely. for yourself. Fuck yeah, um, yes. God bless you guys. Can I be here still when you talk? Can I just? Yeah, sure. sure. I, I have you to go on my fritz. Get another beer. Yes, one second. Okay. Is it okay? <laughs> Is it okay? I drink in here, like. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice you're, you've already nice been drinking, so it's nice. nice sense. <laughs> it's apple juice. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe we want to start uh, getting some conclusions, right? So, so considerations, right? Like we're we're considerate about things in the world, right? Like so. No. so like one, considering one, one a lot of things. Oh, well, I, I want to like go back to what we were talking about. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, I got pee then. <laughs> Toilet. Okay. Okay. Have, a, have a good pee. So, um, what one thing that we we want to do is if we want to be considerate about the things in the world, right? Like, what 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 are the, the things that we have to consider to, well, like we were talking about in the conversation to plot our course in in life, right? Like that. That is a way way to be considerate about things in the world and then we we have to find a way for ourselves to to realize which things are relevant right like which, which things are words of consideration and, and which things are not word uh, consideration right and if if we have a way that we're we, we're making things that are relevant to us right irrelevant right we're, we're being inconsiderate towards the future towards the the, the path like our, our final goal right like we we want to manifest this this aim that we're having in the world so, so we, we need we need to have that discernment right and and that's that's a hard path right like and i think that's why we're having these talks we're having these talks to, to figure out like what what is the way that we can start discerning what do we need to consider and, and what don't we consider. Um, wh what do we need to consider in ourselves? What do we need to consider in others? Like what what is important, right? Um, um, 
Yeah, Mark, do you want to add something there? Yeah, I think the problem with, with consideration is exactly that. It's one thing to say, oh, have you considered, right? It's another thing to put your preferences on another person and use consideration as an excuse, right? So I know the mm. example that, that was used earlier today was, you know, vanilla versus chocolate ice cream. Well, what about uh, mint, mint chip, right? It's like, well, except that why is that your three things, right? Why isn't it the 108 flavors or whatever? And that's, you know, all you're doing is imposing your preferences on another person and calling it consideration, right? And, and that's a way in which you're not being considerate, even though you appear to be, because you're, you're again, you're conflating the consideration, the, the, the decision, with the act of being kind to a person, which is a different different thing. It's just a conflation in the language. People are very confused about that. I just saw your first video. You said, hello, and welcome. <laughs> Why you don't talk like that anymore? I, I do still talk good. like that. <laughs> <laughs> this film is so he's, weird. He's like, been learning. I love, to, I love to stalk in like videos or like uh, channels. It's just interesting um, how people grow. You look mm -hmm. the same, but you know, like how we grow in time. Uh, we all yeah. just kind of eat ourselves every day, you know, in a sense, like our own flesh, our own bacteria and micro, so on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we change over time for sure. And we develop all the time, all the time, unexpected. all the fucking time, man. And, and I just love how, um, opinions and discussions can change from second to second from from one uh, sentence or one vibration or whatever you know a sound maybe even you know it, it's kind of like a hypnot what, hypnotizing you, you're, you're actually talking to two people who hardly do that <laughs> okay like i i i hardly change my opinion about about things no, again, uh, like you say, old dog cannot learn, and that's not true. No, no, and of course, again, way. you guys are older than me, at least, and you probably have built a stronger opinion in in most things than me. So I'm like, but but um, but I think it's 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 uh, very important to be open, and you guys seem open. That's all I want to say. Like, yes, we're open in some ways, but we're we're closed in others, right? Um, and and that you want to uh, still learn. Yeah, and and, and there's see, there's a line see. there, right? And and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. there's a dance there, right? Like there's a, okay. there's a way in which which you you can navigate that, and and there's a way that, that well, when when you're dancing, right? Like some people can dance, and and they're they're all, all always out of balance, right? And then there's other oh people shit, like yeah, yeah, dance yeah, and and yeah. they have sure few footing. You should see me dance. I'm a good dancer, but like yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 that's 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 what we we end up like. If you can if you can live life with with while dancing, not not getting out of balance, not falling over, right? Like that's the place that you want to get, to, right? Like that's the place where you can be confident uh, in, in your life. Activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I make it and, simpler uh, and simpler, but it's just my words because you guys have very uh, big brain for me sometimes. The, no, it's just like the words. Like I'm not English speaking uh, official. Like I speak Danish, you know. And I just started learning English three years ago, and now I speak seven other languages too. I speak uh, different languages every day. So uh, it's just kind of messed up. So Andy, um, I'm I'm gonna leave you with an invite to Discord that we hang out. Yeah, I have a Discord. I have a Discord. Uh, I have many servers myself, but I'd love to join you guys. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, or, or I'll just I'll just post my ID in the yeah yeah in the wow. session here, and and then we'll meet up because oh. uh, it's okay. since we're both in Europe, right? Like we, at least I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> not go will to the add. neighbors probably. <laughs> you know, Denmark and Canada is neighbors now. We're sharing borders, but we don't even. So, so here. like I I put it in a private chat. Uh, yeah. Like I want to yeah. give the opportunity for. Uh, the, Where is he? Me, for the uh, people in the comment section to have a last say, uh, I think we we kind of have uh, yeah. No, you're good. Been you're good. Considerate One enough end. of uh, what considerations are. Oh shit! Oh, there we I, I, I think it was too too little. 
because of me, of course. Uh, no, no, no. We in, think we breaking in, but I hope yeah, you got what you needed for that video. I was yeah, really, no, I'm really been happy. Going for three hours, dude. We, we, we've been going a long time, and <laughs> it's time for okay. us to, to get yeah. the chickens. Oh, yeah, three hours. Holy moly. Yeah. I didn't know that. Three hours. So you can watch it all back and, and uh, <laughs> see all yeah. what we did. And so, yeah, yes, thanks for hopping in. And uh, I, I hope you. you'll engage on the Discord, right? And uh, I will, I will, I will. Send me a link in there and I will. Okay. To the server. Have a good one. See you.